Hello, how are you? Welcome to Chapman World. All right, hi, hello, uh, welcome to the Apocalypse Coding Group. Thanks for joining us. Uh, looks here like I have literally none of the other speakers on the call are visible. So while I take care of that, uh, I'm joined here by Frank Lauter and Ian Barker today. Uh, why don't you guys give us a hello and I'll try and fix the screen shares here. It's not tr uh, trickery or anything like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Uh, we're actually... <laughs> we're actually also discussing today, um, this is, we're, we're going to call this end of sprint, okay? So development-wise, we're aiming to get, uh, we already have Frank's client, which is working. We're aiming to get uh, Ian's client working. Uh, Andrea's not able to be with us this week, but he did say uh, last week that he's going to work a little on the FMX client in the background uh, and get that up. So we're effectively going to try and call it uh, development done today. Though it's still rough around the edges, we can always come back and visit that and, and try to patch up some uh, code offline. And happy birthday to Andrea, absolutely. Oh, I'm not singing it, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're going to call Dev Complete today, and then um, I, it's still TBD, but I may come back next week to do a follow-up session, uh, maybe a playthrough of the game or something like that, but uh, uh, not planning to do any more live coding on this. Today will be it, so it, the, the pressure's all on Ian. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, absolutely. So I will leave the server up and running, uh, provided uh, the the one proviso is if it uh, it is not being abused. You know, if people are um, deliberately trying to mess with the server or anything like that, then um, I'll consider taking it down or you know opening it under a different URL with better uh, DDoS protection or something. Um, but provided it 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 doesn't cost me too much in terms of maintenance. I'll certainly leave it running uh, with a game on it. And I do plan to put more questions in. Hopefully, um, today, later today, uh, I'll be able to get some additional questions in there. I'm actually hoping to be able to use it for a... Uh, at work, we do kind of a, a weekly happy hour type deal, and I'm hoping to kind of introduce it to my coworkers as a, a happy hour um, piece if it's complete enough. So I'll certainly be trying to get more questions into it. Um, so yeah, long-term goals is just to leave it there. Uh, I'll maintain it with um, minor. Um, being told that there's only voice coming from me, I will check on that in just a moment. Uh, but to leave it running with um, uh, with uh, minor updates to to patch it and make it more uh, entertaining. So uh, one of you guys say something and I'll watch the mixer. Okay, yeah, it doesn't appear to be forwarding your voices out on this new, I have a new audio interface. Hey. So we okay. can say all the rude jokes we like. We like. just make them audible, <laughs> so there you go. Oh, so, 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 If you want to uh, do a quick reintroduce yourself, I'm, I'm sorry, the volume wasn't set right, so. Oh, so, oh, so, 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 I, sh so I should be. <laughs> so just let me say the reason for this. Um, I had borrowed a mixing device from um, Jim to get my new headset working so that I could improve my own audio. 
Uh, and that was working beautifully, but I didn't want to keep the loaner forever, so I'd been ordering replacement parts. And one of the things that I did not expect to be difficult to obtain during the COVID shutdown was a USB audio mixer. I figured I'll go to Amazon, order one, and it'll arrive in six days or something, and I'll, I'll be off to the races. But as it happens, every time I ordered three different vendors, they all said, okay, we've taken your order, we've got your credit card details, now it's on back order and you won't get it for two months. And I just, uh, th that frustrated me. So anyway, I was out walking yesterday and the local, um, I'm going to try and pronounce this for uh, Americans, pawn shop, uh, was, <laughs> we had that conversation. Uh, so the local shop was uh, open and I just went in and found this little mixer, in uh, not mixer, um, USB audio interface, in the back cabinet sitting there, uh, 30, 40 bucks, cheaper than anything I'd ordered, available to take right now. But I've not yet set all the scenes up properly for it, apparently. So there you go. Okay, okay so, so perhaps, perhaps your answer, answer to, my to my question that, that nobody, nobody heard, heard yeah. sounds a little, <laughs> little bit weird. weird. So, so I, I say, again. say again. Hello from, hello from Germany, Germany. Welcome, welcome to our stream. To our stream. And, and hello, hello to Elvi. You were faster than me. Than Thanks for saying hello and where you're from. from. And, and uh, my, uh, my question, question to Greg was, was what's his, his future plans, plans for the game, the game if the server has been running, and, running and, and um, um, are the users, users able, able to ask questions, questions as he answers? He answer. already, he already, he already gave, gave you, you don't, don't hear my hear questions. questions. Yeah, essentially, it'll be there as long as it's not abused and doesn't become a management uh, uh, maintenance uh, concern for me. It'll be there and, and running. With regards to submitting questions, um, yes, we should probably build, uh, or I should probably build, uh, an interface to allow questions to be submitted, um, obviously with vetting, um, you know, because that could get a little bit fun. I can just see it now. now. <laughs> yeah. Something, 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 something adver adver about, about making, making something, something small, small, small or bigger or larger or whatever. Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And they wouldn't put it in the oh, way. No, no, no. We have, we have an echo, echo on, 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 on voices. voices. How can we have an echo? Oh, dear. It's on the same Oh, okay. <laughs> so, this is bad news. Basically, uh, the reason we had an echo is because I had to. I, I don't want to have to unmute each of you individually as you speak, uh, which is what it's looking like I might have to do if I can't fix this. Let me take a quick look at the settings. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Yep. So I'm going to let you both know that you can't be heard right now because I muted you to prevent the echo. <laughs> oh, help me. Okay, uh, Mbox out. Let's just give this a try and see if I can set the audio source. <sighs> Is this going to become a problem? Okay, so, yep, now I have an echo. Okay, that's not good. Okay, my new mixer actually causes problems for everybody. Okay, I'm going to unmute uh, Ian briefly. So that perhaps that's why he used just 30 bucks. Right, so I'm playing a bit of a <laughs> hack. Basically, um, I have uh, Frank muted, but we can hear Frank through Ian's output. So it's kind of a hack, but it should work. Oh, the blur! The blur stops my little messages. Yeah, yeah. your hello from. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was going to just put up messages every so often, but uh, yeah, it blurs it. Yeah, that's I, I'm, that's so unfortunate that this. So this mixer basically, what's happening is this mixer works a little different to the previous one. Uh, if I include its audio source, it only includes the mic, not the speakers in the output. Uh, and that's why the Skype call can't be heard through. I was capturing my speakers for the Skype call. Uh, so that's a little unfortunate, but I think I've got both of you audible now. Um, somebody in the audience, please if tell you me if turn, wrong. If you turn off your mic as an audio source and then just only play the data, then it will so hear your mic. So try one, two, three. Right. The <laughs> question is, how do you do that? Let's... <laughs> Uh, Let, let's have a quick look. This at, is gonna. This is. <laughs> this is gonna be a masterclass in using OBS or something yeah, like that. Yeah. So <laughs> I think the um, the simple answer is I will probably um, we'll get you started with a screen share and then I will go and get the previous mixer that I was using uh, and use that until we're okay. 
Oh, and I'm apparently only yes. appearing in a le in, in the left ear. If I I've gone on mono as well. <sighs> Here you are, folks. Live coding. Live, live streaming in <laughs> in general. I mean, okay, so uh, I've got a mix setting. Do I have? I'm going to have a look on the back of this box and see if I have a a mono setting. What Craig needs is a roadie. <laughs> <laughs> That is exactly what I need. Uh, yeah, no, okay. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Helga's saying it sounds okay now. So we've got at least, I think, all of us uh, on the stream. I think... Oh, I love the QR code. Yeah, pretty good. Maybe, um, maybe <laughs> I can make it work with the... I mean, it's working now. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it as is. I won't mess with it while, we're <laughs> while it's working. So people can, people can hear us talking, is Absolutely. that right? Absolutely. Should, they should be able to hear you and Frank, but uh, Frank actually uh, will become inaudible if you mute your speakers. But <laughs> otherwise, we're good. <laughs> so if, if I'm hearable to Ian's, to Ian's Skype call, so uh, I sound I like to... I'm from UK? Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, except <laughs> I'm from Dallas, so <laughs> yeah, it's going to be. Gonna be a fun setup. Frank will start speaking with the British accent, and I mean, I'll start speaking with the German one. And I guess Craig will just have to use the normal Australian accent that he's got. Yeah, I'll stick with being uh, Australian, mate. All right. Yeah, my daughter's theory is if you have a British father and an American mother, then it means the child is Australian. Oh, that makes uh, a lot of sense. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I get it. So, so, so little little side note. I just found a nice homepage where you can do text to speech and you have uh, six or seven US speakers uh, men and women and also for the UK and the funny part is you have also Indian speakers and if you they are reading it's 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 so it's so funny <laughs> it sounds like you are uh, connected to an to an hotline to the, that is forwarded to India we should get one that converts everything to German, and then we can create a virtual Frank. It would be awesome. <laughs> okay, guys, I, I I don't want to mess with what's working, but I can always put this back. I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna try a quick setting here and see if this fixes our issue. Okay. Mm. And I know that we're a little bit behind on the stream, so if that is working, someone, if you don't hear an echo and you can hear Frank and Ian. Okay, someone let me know if that is coming out. In fact, I'm going to listen into the stream myself for a second. That did not work, so I'm just going to put it back as it was. Uh Okay, and... Oh, nobody hears me. Okay. Yeah, that, that was not working. Okay, it's back, at, it's back as it was. I won't mess with it now. Let's, uh, let's uh, kick this... Uh... Shall I share my screen? Please then? do. Let's kick this off and get started with some coding. Let's just see what happens. Hang on. I'm waiting for the screen sharing thing to come up. Hello. He said screen share. Ah. You let me know when it's sharing, and I will hit the button that will probably not work because we're live. <laughs> right you should be able to see my desktop yes okay uh i see your desktop i'm gonna share it no that's ian's face not his desktop there you go that's your desktop shared and i'm being told that i'm still only coming through uh from one speaker so i'm, I'm gonna click that button again <laughs> i'm gonna click that button again and see if that fixes uh is, yeah Right now, I'm talking. If I'm coming from both speakers, please let me know, and I will leave things as they are. Uh, they can hear the birds. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, you're, you can be heard. I can be heard. The birds can be heard. Frank can be heard. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, hang on. Hang on. I, I was lying when I said you could be heard. I was lying when I said you oh, could be heard. Now you can be heard. Go. <laughs> so now I can be heard. Okay. Hello again, everybody. It's going well. Um, <laughs> we didn't mean to actually create a virtual apocalypse on the stream, but there you go. So um, what I'm going to do then is just briefly talk about um, what the plan is today and whether or not we will succeed. In theory, um, I, I have to actually finish um, on the dot of 12 today, mid midday. Oh, loud noise in my headset. From, uh, really? Yeah, very Still? loud. Like, uh, yeah, this is your no, air condition and everything. Yeah, it's fine. I don't know whether anybody can hear it, but I'll carry on talking anyway. So um, at the moment, if you go to just a normal URL, um, up comes Frank's um, HTML version of the game, and that game works. And um, if you went instead to the web client HTML, um, you would see the um, TMS web core version of the game. Um, I'm guessing a lot of the people that are watching the stream right now have probably watched it before, so um, that's great. If you haven't watched it before, the plan is to create a um, Cards Against Humanity or um, uh, Apples and Pears, I think it was, what was it called? Apples it's to Apples? Or, or I, I don't know. That, yeah, that, that, that kind of game where um, the idea is that you get given a slogan and then you can uh, buy a judge and then... Um, Sorry, by a person that hosts the game, and then each player can then pick a likely um, response to go with that slogan. So you might say something like, "Today I got up late because," and then there will be five or six different choices it can pick from, saying things like, "Because I uh, haven't slept for seven days," or something ridiculous like that, or my web browser was too slow, and so I can wake up early, or something. I don't know, you know, some nonsense thing. Um, the HTML version basically is driven by the server. It's serving up um, pages, as I understand it, from the server. Um, whereas the um, web client version, the TMS web core version, is a set of web pages that's actually on the root of the, um, the uh, web space. Um, we've got an API in the background, and the idea is that we are going to patch these buttons and things like that in to the um, API. And... There's not a lot of coding to be done, but there is some coding to be done. At the moment, nothing will happen. If I click on join a game, okay, it's going to say not implemented. But actually, with TMS WebClaw, I can hit F12, and these are the um, Firefox, but also the Edge um, debugging tools. So I can go to the console, and in my code, I've got a output debug string, and what it does is actually um, outputs to the... Um, browser console and so i can see that i'm actually talking to the api here so i've got a bunch of stuff come down from the api um with tms webcore you can also see the source code that generated those web pages if you're set to debug so when i set to debug what it does is it creates a map file and that map file contains effectively all of the um, pascal source code and um whatever web page you know whatever pages i've created in here um it'll actually um include the source and i can set um, breakpoints and things like that so if i hit a breakpoint um when i click on here it would actually go into the um, browser um uh, browser developer tools and uh, show me the source code and that line broken and i can then ex examine all the variables now what we're going to do today is um go into delphi or Delphi, if you're uh, leaning in that direction, in terms of the pronunciation, and we're going to try and write the rest of the game. Okay. Now, um, if you've been following along on the streams, first of all, congratulations for spending an awful lot of time online um, watching a bunch of people uh, uh, play with code. Um, I haven't followed along all of them, so actually I don't know <laughs> the API that well, um, but the way that WebCore works um is basically you have got a Delphi um, IDE, the normal uh, IDE, and this version is, um, I believe, 10.3.3. Uh, yeah, 10.3.2, uh, so update two. Um, the uh, next version that comes out of Delphi uh, coming out very soon. 
which is 10.4, um, called Sydney. Um, if you haven't already had advertising sent to you, you will do, don't worry. It'll be everywhere in the next couple of weeks. Um, but this is 10.3. TMS Web Core is a set of components that um, allow you to basically create web pages as if they are just normal Delphi programs. So I drop the components on the form, and in the background, I then write the code. So that's that's the crux of it, if you've not seen before. Apologise to all the people that have been watching before and go, oh, we know this, get to the coding. Okay, I'm, now, while you're saying um, that, I'm just going to randomly say something to, so that I can hear myself coming back through the stream. Ahead. I think that was it, wasn't it? <laughs> so um, you, 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 the, the uh, appearance on the web page, uh, the buttons looks different. This yeah. is because you're using Bootstrap as as uh, as a framework, or what is it? Yes, that's exactly it. What I've got is, um, in fact, if I pull up the browser again, um, if I was to um, view the page source. Um, you can see this line here where it's actually pulling in the um, Google Bootstrap um, API. And that means um, with the CSS there, all I need to do is, um, and you're quite right, it does look different and that's deliberate, but uh, all I need to do is um, go into there and say that um, the element class name is, and then it is one of the um, Bootstrap classes. So if I was to um, pull over a page about Bootstrap, I just happen Love to have Bootstrap one here. Saying that, just um, audio again. Uh, so it's it's good. it's also fully responsive, responsive with uh, being able to shrink down to uh, iPhone size or something like that. Actually, um, I haven't done that bit yet, and um, yes, you can do that. Um, if I was going to do that, we'd probably take a lot more time because um, what I would have to do is do things like responsive grids, and then we'd have to test it and make sure it fitted in, and oh, this button doesn't shrink down enough, and that button's too big, and all the rest of it. For now, I'm gonna code it for a browser, okay. and then um, if we have enough time, then I'll, I'll make it more responsive and fit. Um, and if uh, if we don't, if we run out of time, then during the week, I'm gonna do another stream that then um, Craig can host on Chapman World, that will be a follow-up just showing how to make it responsive. But um, here's the classes, for example. So um, if we just go back and look at that, there it says btn-info. And if I go back into the um, bootstrap, uh, btn-info is that one there. And uh, it just happens to be this particular button color. So you can do themes um, with TMS WebCore. Um, it's perfectly possible to um, create themes and then um, update the CSS. They've got some code that will allow you to do that. What you would do is, um, oops, uh, sorry. what you would do is you would um, go in here. You could say inject the CSS because the whole um, the whole of TMS Web Core has got lots of little extra um, properties to make the HTML and the JavaScript blend together with the um, Delphi. Uh, so this this is not a normal button. So it's a TMS whatever button you put it's on a, the form. It's a TMS web button, so it's the equivalent to a T button. Okay. Um, it's it, although you've got um, components that are like the standard components. And I particularly chose these buttons rather than any other you know fancy component buttons um, because I wanted to make sure that we were using as close as possible to stuff that you would find in Delphi normally. So, so what this TMS is a, has this is his own own framework thing, which is be able to use the same component on VCL and FMX. Um, yes, they do. That's cool. They good. have also buttons uh, that is equal on this web uh, stuff. Yeah, they do. And in fact, those buttons are the ones I've got down the side here, which are called FNC, which is their framework new, neutral component set. So these will work on TMS WebCore, they will work on FMX, and they will also work on VCL. So if um, you design a, a, a frame or a form with this components only, you can compile it for web, VCL, and FMX. This is right? Correct, yes. Uh, do you, do yeah. you lease, do you do you miss some properties like these bootstrap class styles on the FNC button? What, what happens is that there are compromises because... For example, the FireMonkey um, 
attributes that you'd come to expect in FireMonkey cannot be there um, for the um, FNC components. The FNC components are like anything, they are a generalization of the um, shared properties of all those uh, libraries. So um, I'm not, I'm not going to drop one on because I don't want to mess up the app, but things like caption um, on a button um, is a VCL way of doing things, but text on a FireMonkey um, component. So if you look at the FNC, they actually basically have their own versions of these um, properties. So yes, if you use them, you can then reuse that code in, uh, in, in any of your projects. But um, the downside is, if I did that now, it would mean that people would need to subscribe to TMS's, um, um, uh, uh, you know, component pack uh, for FNC to get those. I, I, I am using WebCore, so if you want to um, open this code in your own um, brow, uh, your own version of Delphi, then you're going to need to have a version of TMS WebCore. They do do a trial version. So you should be able to open this with the trial version. But what I did want to do was then go and use all their other components. And so you would also need trial versions of all the FNC, FNC components. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm trying uh, to I'm trying to uh, you know minimize what we're using of a third party library. But there's no getting away from it. You know. Okay. So if is the it. FNC uh, had don't have the FMX ability to group each component to each other because this is not uh, possible in VCL, right? Uh, um, but to be honest, I've not used them that way when I've used it in uh, um, WebCore. But I, let me just backtrack from that a second. Okay, I've used WebCore in projects that are now on sale. In fact, they're about to go on sale now. And so I have created commercial um commercially available products that are going to come out uh, they're, they're imminent as soon in fact the office in the uk that i wrote this for they return next week <laughs> uh, from isolation so uh, as soon as they come back all the sales team are like congratulations here's a new product you've got to learn about and like, oh okay uh um, okay. but but that particular project, I use things in a particular way, and so I I'm not trying to claim to be an expert on all of TMS's um, stuff, but no, no, no problem. The no FNC problem. stuff, I have used it, and it's great. There's nothing wrong with it. You cannot do all the things you can do with FireMonkey, like the animations and stuff like that. They're just not available. And in WebCore, there are other ways of doing the animations anyway. If you wanted to with JavaScript, right? So I'm gonna um, just get back as to a side note addition there. Oh. Um, essentially, what you when you write this code, what you generate is a website, right? You generate a JavaScript, HTML, it's just a website. So even right. if, uh, and this is why we said that it's fine to use uh, WebCore, um, because even if you don't have access to WebCore to be able to open the code and play with it, you can at least still install, because we're uploading the, the JavaScripts and everything to the repo, uh, you can at least install the site and, and work with it. Yeah, and, and one thing I would say about this is that, um, like any cross compiler, and that's what this is, it's a cross compiler compiling from Delphi into JavaScript. The JavaScript is not going to be the same as the JavaScript a human being would write. Um, it's close, but uh, you know, a JavaScript programmer will go, Oh, I wouldn't do it that way, I would use this framework, and I would use this way of doing things, and this kind of um, structure, right. program structure behind the scenes. Same as we would do with Delphi if someone had written a C program and then they cross compile it into Pascal um, or Object Pascal, so Delphi, um, we're going to look at it and go, Well, you know, it looks okay because it's a C program and they're very similar with the syntax, but we wouldn't have done it that way. There are better ways right. of doing it in Delphi. So, you know, it's the same with the JavaScript. You know, good luck opening it. But certainly the HTML, it's absolutely designed that what you've got behind um, the, uh, the behind the um, the uh, web form is you've got HTML um, uh, pages there. And what you can do is you can have a HTML for this page, um, this particular one, and you can... Um, have your code addressing the actual um, objects or classes or divs um, in your code, and it creates placeholders in. Write the HTML as a HTML 
person, you know, a web developer, and then um, uh, uh, write the Pascal so that the the Delphi code is actually um, only just providing the business logic, if you like, and then the, the rest of the design is done by the web designer. Now we're not but, doing but it's that. It's working, so you, you, yeah. You're, but, but if you, me, if you let, don't, let, let me finish. Uh, okay, me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. But the reason the reason that that is quite important is because that is the kind of thing that C Sharp Blazor, um, as it's called, or Blazor. Um, programming does with blazer which is a, a web framework for c sharp and for um uh you know dot net uh you do exactly the same thing you have web pages which you then put in some um references to um classes and objects and then you write your c sharp code and the blazer pages are effectively running that code and and um, and uh, you know the web designer can design the web page, and the coder can write the code, and the two don't necessarily have to be the same person. And you could do that with this. Now we're not going to do that. We can do all of it inside of Delphi, inside of the uh, the Rad Studio IDE, um, just because that's what we're used to. And I'm trying to do simple coding that people can get in the head easily. So I'm not going to use lots of difficult, um, you know, abstraction and things like that. But the, because of the way that um, Delphi and the web call works, there are some complications to calling the um, API because I have to call it um, asynchronously, which means I call it and then uh, an event has to be called within my program um, asynchronously and then I carry on after that. It's not just a case of call, wait, wait for the response, then do, do something else. Now, TMS web call 1.4 which is um, out um, as a beta at the moment and I'm not using, actually allows anonymous methods, um, anonymous functions, so that I say. And because of the anonymous function, you can keep all the code in one place and uh, you know call a, a, a REST request and get the anonymous function called when that REST request term returns, which is a little bit easier to get your head around, but uh, I'm not going to do that today. So um, I should start. Not coding, otherwise I'm never going to get anything <laughs> done. <laughs> All right. Um, right. Do you want uh, to say yeah, something? So where are we in terms of uh, in terms of the code? You can click the start button and start a game. Uh, oh, we we got, we didn't do it. We left it with you couldn't okay. do anything. Uh, the only the only thing that you could do was you could um, call the URL and the API call for okay. getting the games. That was the only thing. And what that did then is that. Um, replied back with the response and the response we would just output debug string whatever that response was and what that looks like on um, the actual game is if I just um, hit F12 and you'll see um, yeah this, wasn't it? Um, sorry lost bit, bit of code I was looking at hold on time a second uh, data model yes yeah, data model that's it. so um what that looked like is this. So there's the source code in the browser, okay? And um, there's the response. Now, if I just go over to the console, that was the result of the output.txt. The out, 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 yeah, exactly, the data we're getting out. So that's as far as we've got, because that's where okay. we stopped, well, basically. Well, uh, in that case, um, so we actually need to leave that, uh, that end dangling for a moment, because... Um, you're really not going to get gains back. I mean, you are right now getting gains back because of um, leftover data in the database. But uh, that data now, because you've made a REST call, has probably pinged out uh, and been erased. So it's quite likely that there's no data for you to get on the games endpoint at this point. So what we need to do actually is to build up the create game endpoint so that you can create a game before attempting to join it. Right. Uh, well, I thought, the, uh, yeah, I understand, but I thought also that the idea was that if you clicked on join a game, you would get back some available games and we oh, do something like that. It doesn't that's matter. absolutely right, but at the moment there are no available games because you haven't created one. Right. Right. I understand. Right. So the, you, you were asking me how far we got, that's and that's as far as, far as, as we'd we got. Yeah. we 
we wanted to prove that we could get a rest response the last time we did it, and th that was the available one. He, you said, call this API, so we did, and we got some data back, so we nope, knew it was that's, working. That's fine. Okay, I'm just so, looking, the reason for asking is to know what needs to happen next, um, and, and that's basically it. We need to, uh, you need to be able to click start a game, get to the page where you fill in your details, and then we need to, to create that endpoint that goes off and creates a game. That's, that's the next step to get us up and running. Correct. So if I just explain how we're going to do this, uh, normally we have a controller. That's how I write it. And the controller will work on a model and um, fill the model with um, data. Okay. And then um, the actual view, which is the web page like this, um, will simply call the controller and um, get the responses back. Um, we're not going to go that far. What we're going to do is get the data module to be the controller, effectively. And so we will have methods on here which can be called by the web pages. And the responses will be controlled by the, the um, data module. And um, we will have callbacks that get called over. So um, if I just... Um, just as an FYI, so uh, we actually have... Um, I don't know that you can reuse it because you're compiling down to JavaScript, but... Uh, we actually have a data model which takes care of serialization and deserialization of objects, but it does that through the FMX's JSON to uh, you know to JSON. Yeah, I looked. I looked at that. We can't reuse that. Okay, so we're gonna have to deserialize each object, which yeah, I, well, I think Java will yeah, give you. Don't JavaScript worry. will give you a much more powerful way of deserializing anyway, right, and give you the object back. But but this is system REST and system JSON. It should be in the system. But if it's not available here, I understand. Yeah, it's not available for web because um, well, you've got system, your web core there's version. There's the equivalent yeah. of system REST. Uh, it's it's yeah. not available okay. because the, none of the none of the system units effectively have been uh, built so that they can be compiled to JavaScript. Instead, you've got alternative system units that can be built to JavaScript. Right. So. Yeah, and I, and in fact, I'm. I think we're probably over engineering it anyway. If we do a lot of um, and calls like that, we're going to go for the simplest options yep. possible. Um, you know, I I want people to look at this and understand it straight away without going, oh god, how does that work? And what does that call do? Um, so let's uh, let's just talk about um, this then. So what happens is when you call get games, um, it actually calls a um, HTTP um, uh, yep. request, okay, and uh, with a get, and on there is an event that's the response mm -hmm. when you call that. Now, um, what we're actually normally the pattern that we were gonna we will do is we'll do it like this. So we will have um, get games, and we will have something like a, a callback that gets passed over. So if I just um, open Notepad for a second. I'll show you what I mean rather than get lots of squigglies everywhere. Yep, and I'm just looking some stuff up in the code at the back because we're what we need now is either the I forget whether it's uh, post or put, but I'm just looking to see which one it is. Um, probably it's a get. Yeah, I would imagine it's not a get. Not to create a game, right? To create a no, he is in get games, not not to right, create but games. It, so get games is going to give you. I would expect it to give you no data back. Is the point? Is is kind of pointless to be doing a get right now? We need to do a, we need to focus on the the post or put, whichever creates the. Yeah. yeah okay. So, um, I'm I'm using this because this is our example. Okay. The um get games for um, back. Okay. So. <clears throat> Yep. Okay. So I'm just, uh, it's post that we need to be on next. I'm just looking it up. So. So the, the pattern for any of the APIs, okay, let's not even call it get games. Let's call it, yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. So the pattern will, the, yeah, the pattern will be um, games. Uh, Um, get games and then that will execute okay and what will happen is in the response that you get in here 
this is going to be the pattern that we're going to have. You get that you get that response because that's tied into the event of here. And in here, it will say um, if uh, assigned um, f get games or call back, then depend on the signature of the get games call back. Um, do I mean, you know. So some data or something like that. Not not a response. Uh, I'm just I'm abbreviating. I'm saying like oh, okay, there'll be some code in there. <laughs> but, and and then what will happen is uh, once you've processed the response and you say oh that's correct and it's got what I want in it and you build up whatever it is you want to do, then um, it calls that callback and the callback um, executes. Now the callback will look. Um, uh like something like this so we will have a type and t get games or back um equals final reference to oh, yeah. um Data. Is what we're going to call it. Right. So, if you can see there, what will happen is you in here you would do something with the response, and then at some point you will say some data equals uh, response whatever dot text or some some nonsense, and and that is the pattern. So, the front end, the the um, view calls this function. And doesn't ever communicate with the um, the uh, the um, HTTP request. And at the point at which it calls it in the code, um, wherever we do that, um, here, at that point, this 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 stops executing, and there's nothing. This this form can do nothing because it's asynchronous. We don't know if it's been successful. We don't know when it's going to come back. We don't know if it will come back successfully. Um, we don't know if there will be some error. But um, they're calling this. This sets up the um, HTTP uh, re request, uh, executes it. Then there's a, um, a response back from the um, HTTP um, a component. Um, we do that, then we do that, and then we get the call back. So in this program, this part of the program here, you're going to have um, uh, a procedure or whatever you want to call it that will actually um, get called by the um, controller, okay, by the callback. So in that way, you're linking backwards and forwards, but there's no actual link. If you say, I mean, you're injecting the dependency between the two things. And as long as you, you know, you're both referring to this in the same way, this reference, it will work, okay, and it, and it will compile. Now, the question is, which of the things that you've created can we reuse? And the answer is maybe none of them right now. Um, where would I find your modules or your classes? So just looking at that, what what I see, I don't know if I can pop this off and make this. Um, I don't think I can actually. I don't, I don't want to drag across my uh, Notepad Plus platform, but because um, I've got passwords on that one. Uh, so um, you're using interfaces, which is fine. Game state. 
iGame data. Let me guess, you use an array of iGame data, do you? Yeah, and then that's that immediately means we. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that doesn't matter. We will uh, we will use uh, our own version. So right. So I don't know if that makes sense to anybody. If people on the stream want to comment and say no, I don't understand what the hell he's talking about, or um, or yes, that is clear as mud. But I get it. <laughs> uh, may, may, may may I just interrupt you with this pattern sure. a little bit? So um, you you would normally do this with every different kind of uh, rest call you have to do right well, so I was, if i was if i was doing this as a a project that i had planned out um what i would do is work out which calls are compatible then create um callbacks that are um you know mm -hmm. generic uh and if necessary inherit from those to create you know slightly different ones or something like that but um we're not got that many calls. Yeah, that's my understanding. I mean, yeah. So yeah. my my idea well, was you know. uh, if you if you if you do this kind of thing for uh, the necessary get, put, and push, these are the three types we have. Uh, you can do a case inside and do all the tricks with all these two functions. But you, yeah. Okay. So what you're saying is that we would then pr pass the um, request response. And work out what response it is. Is that right? Uh, no. Yeah. So uh, let, let, let's imagine two. Let's imagine two different calls. You have to do the get games for the game list, or you yes. have to do the push uh, games for creating a game. So right. uh, you 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 can call it with with different callbacks, but you can also uh, just uh, put this into a big case because you always have your f local stuff where you also put your f get game callback and you can store uh, i've called the push or i've called the get and at the response you know uh, at this time this is the uh, response for the from the get request and this is the response for the push request that, and, and then it, you can handle all the json to object stuff yeah, uh, in there yeah it gets a little more yeah. tricky because the thing with the with the fact that it's asynchronous means that you could send off say uh, three completely different requests to get a push a post and each of them you do get an id for the request that you've sent so you could maybe do kind of a lookup on the id yeah. um but you those requests could come back at different uh, times i'm not i'm not doing that yeah it, <laughs> I, I, i'm not going to do that that could get very yeah. complicated so can i can i explain why we're not going to do that first of all um separation of concerns we don't want one module one call doing multiple things um even if it's less uh less worthy um to you know uh, to do it that way uh, i think if we have separate um callbacks and the callbacks are separated out um first of all you then know exactly what that callback's purpose is it's not trying yeah, to yeah i i fully understand your concern but we have yeah. 51 minutes into the well, stream and have not let's get, do anything let's get at the moment yeah, so i think um it's because of these people <laughs> keep talking. I think that approach <laughs> has the problem that you'd then have to build a whole structure of uh, storage of the requests that yeah. you'd sent uh, to know which request you're actually handling. Um, but yeah, let, let, let's just write some code and get get something working. Well, the, the answer is I'm not, I'm yeah. not going to do that. So <laughs> that's all that one. Right. So, um, okay. So let me. Um, so, did anybody in the, or who's listening to the stream have any other questions? before I go ahead and do it, because what's going to happen now is I'm going to write a yep. load of code. If anyone throws questions um, if, in, the, in the chat, I'll, I'll interrupt you. So. Okay, yep. and I'll ignore you. Right, good. So, um, <laughs> And Greg, uh, perhaps you can do a pull from the repo, uh, compile the, the server and upload it in the background, changes, please. Ready? Okay, I'll do yeah. that right now. Um, and whilst you're doing that, I'm going to create... Um, uh, let's see. Right. So we all have different naming conventions for things. Um, I'm going to create a unit that's um, just got the callbacks in it, um, just so that we can um, refer to those in a particular way. And let's think about this. Right. So um, we're going to have what? what um, uh, so the code that you've pushed uh, includes a unit code site logging which I don't have installed 
uh, and so it fails to build on that. But I'm just going to go ahead and remove that. Uh, Sorry, that so the code that Frank just... Oh, no. That's not oh, actually Frank's okay. code. That's that the FMX sense. project. Ignore me. Good. Thank you. That's a, I think it's in the dependencies section, yeah, if I remember. Yeah, um, I think Andrea's done a push that um, I wasn't aware of that uses code site logging. And because I don't have it in, it's not building. But that's for later. Uh, Frank's changes do build, so they're going up now. OK. Um, that's the procedure. Um, You can do it this way. Um, um, okay. Um, well, we've got t uh, get games. What's the other one? Um, T um, create new game, yeah, isn't it? Create, create game. game, which you just pass a game object uh, as the. Yeah, which. Well, for now, we're going to. Um, We won't pass an object just yet because we haven't got an object to pass. Oops. That would be bad. Um, quick game. What's the other one? So, um, sorry, let me come back to your screen share so I can see what we're talking about. So I was just uploading that code. So yeah. Uh, it's, so we've got get games, games, create games. Um, you, there's, there's actually a second get game call, which is um, get a game by a specific ID, uh, which is slightly different from get uh, games. We'll call that T... Um, get specific specific uh, games. Um, oh dear, specific <laughs> Pacific game. Got a cat. <laughs> yeah, camel case it properly, everybody. Um, uh, and we are going to. Isn't it uh, that the editor supports Control Z? Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> very useful. Um, so we are going to, um, probably going to come up with another one here, which is T, T, um, game, GUID. Um, for now, we'll just do that as a string, but we'll come back to that if necessary. Uh, and then do you want the other endpoints as well? Cause you've got, you know, create user and. Yeah. Yeah. Game. GUID. Um, so, okay, what's uh, the next then one? you've got users, so you want to be able to get user, uh, and this would be a basically user, yeah, user, or I mean player. You could call it player or user, whichever suits you. Uh, but it's the user endpoint. Uh, um, so, what um, what am I passing you across as a user? Don't need to pass anything Reference. through that. You, your authentication string will be used to look the user up. Uh, so you pass in a, a UID as the authentication string. Um, yeah. So we need to do that. Um, so we pass in the, a UID for the I user. I so, yeah, I'm actually... I, I need to... For the user, for the user uh, so or the game? So it the user UID uh, that you pass in get user. Nice. So we want to call that a... Uh, I'm going to open my VCL client to remember uh, all the bits that we need. You said you did, you uh, meant GUID, right? GUID, yeah, GUID. And, and actually, um, what what is the difference? Um, UUID is something different to GUID. <laughs> I know. GUID is a global... You, need. you know what? Let's Google this. Yeah, because I know that they it their names is. have different meanings. I just don't know that there's a technical difference think... between them. Well, yes, no, this is for the inter for uh, for different iOS devices. You have this yeah. UUID, yeah. which is a universally unique as opposed to a globally unique. Um, so I guess that yeah. you know, given that they're basing on the word universe instead of global, um, they're even more unique. You know, I. So again, I don't want to interrupt you, Ian, but uh, I, I think you to build now every callback, 
is the wrong place because I think you have to change it uh, anyway uh, in, in some parts. So why don't you start with implementing the create game first and then well, we see how far I, we go? Uh, I wouldn't do it this way. <laughs> That, okay, that's and you have a you have a nice one to present every line with a type. I never saw that, but okay. Uh, yeah, well, um, there's a reason for that because sometimes you want to do that, and uh, if you've got uh, so what you're saying is I can I can do this right and create them like yes. that. Yeah, I uh, well in fact it's like just that. a different yeah. habit. That's yeah, it's I, kind of the same as putting your users in a particular order so you can comment out the parts of it, right? Well, there's another reason why I do it, and that is if I do, um, if it's a, da, 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 where are they? Um, okay, I it's not coming up, but if I was to um, go into G experts and say, um, uh, editor, where is it? Editor experts and say, um, sort selected lines, okay. Um, I can do this, but if I say ascending, if I've got, um, I like to sort things in alphabetical order, and you'll see that I've also lined up the assignment operators. Okay. Um, that's just the way I do it. But if you've got a very large API, it makes it a lot easier if you can sort it. Two things I do to make that happen. First of all, this, having this at the start of each line, because then you can you can say ignore the, uh, the type and just uh, sort it, because they'll sort alphabetically anyway. Um, and secondly, I, I actually put all of the definition on one line unless I absolutely cannot do it otherwise. Um, um, so what I normally do is if they're, if they're on multiple lines, you know, like you've got lots and lots of arguments and you want to make them clear, you, you know, the on there. Um, I'll, I do it with almost everything. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I, I, I will do things like this, though. Um, so I will have arguments laid out like that on on um, you know big uh, procedures and functions. It's just down to personal style. Um, but if you've got a lot of arguments in, in in some kind of call or something like that, you don't want to have a really long line that you've got to scroll off the screen to see what all the arguments are. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Right, so uh, so get years, get going, create game, and then um, that's as smart as far as we'll get for now, and then we'll probably, as you say, come back to this. Um, so what we need to do is um, go up to here, and um, Alt F11, and in the interface, we need to put the interfaces, and then um, on the top here, we are going to have um, this is a little bit of a hacky cheat, but there you go. We are going to have a bunch of these. Um, yes, just say typing. Um, in fact, if I did this, post it. Yeah. One awesome user. 
Um, the good thing I'm looking forward to in uh, 1.4 is that all of this working a lot more smoothly. <laughs> um, right, so I actually want to say uh, yeah, it's going good. If anything, that's a call back. Uh, uh, uh. Right, so does that make sense? I think it does, doesn't it? Anybody got any questions so far? It uh, doesn't look as though there's any questions in the chat. Um, I was uh, out of the way for a moment there, so I didn't see everything you did, but um, I've also opened the code up to the point where I'm making the same call. So, so you're doing this all with a local var and the reference call because you want to use um, anonymous well, methods? No. Um, <coughs> Excuse me, I just coughed on the stream. I'm sorry. In the get games, if you recall, we're going to... Um, uh, actually have it so that it says um, in here um, get games and we're actually going to have um, games or that whoops oh dear apps lock in games or the back uh, it's not going to be a string it's going to be um, a T games in there. Now, will this synchronize or not? Yes, it will. I'm, yeah. I'm going to have some. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit of a relief. I've. I think I mentioned to you offline. I've got about 15 hours of pre-recorded content planned to record, and I've got to find time to record it. Um, but I'm going to be relieved because I don't have to manage the audio streams live. I just coughed and muted everywhere but the cough. So I'm sorry for that. <laughs> That's impressive. Right, so um, here we're going to say... Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, so here we're going to say... Games callback equals the game callback like that, and then in the response, we're going to say um, we're going to do something um, yeah, we're going to say. And then and oh, get get game callback. I uh, forget what the signature of this was again. Get games games found. Right. So um, quite obviously, with that, that's not everything. So what will happen here is in here, in fact, let's do it this way. In here, we will say um, process the um, a response and um, load the um, games object list uh, and validate the a response. Okay. So we would validate it, and then assuming if it's valid, we would have some kind of um, statement here that says, um, valid, then, like that. Okay, does that make Absolutely. sense? Yeah, and so <clears throat> the question is, what happens here? Well, we go down to here and we um, make a uh, board. Oh. 
So whatever you're doing, perhaps your the stream is freezing, or you're uh, typing sorry. off screen, but. I'm looking off screen at my oh, notes. I see. Because I'm ah, I see. Okay. <laughs> uh, because because uh, at nine o'clock or ten o'clock, because it is now on a uh, Sunday morning, believe me, <laughs> <laughs> I need some help to actually uh, remember what it is I want to do. Right. So, um, what we want to have here is a. Um, We will say da, 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 um, I can't remember if I need to use an app on all here. I don't think I do. Uh, right. Um, no, I don't think yes, I do. I do need to use that. Right. So <clears throat> so in here it's a Oh, yeah. no, so, no, no, no need. It's a referent and it's, it's the same for procedure of object, so no add is needed. I'm I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, for the cross compiler. Oh yes. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And in, and in fact what you can do is you can do it this way. Okay. So let's um get rid of this. Um, I oh, just know that <laughs> nearly said a rude word, everybody. <laughs> I'll cut. I'll cut um, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what you can do there is do it that way if you yeah, want to make it nasty. more sort of self-contained. Well, it's an, yeah. it's an interesting so, thing um, because I didn't. <clears throat> I, I don't believe that you know actual free Pascal. I don't believe it supports reference to. Um, so the compiler that you're using has had that added and therefore may not need the at. Uh, but the cross compiler may need the at because Free Pascal does need the at for all of its other assignments. So uh, given that, you know, it, the, the compiler you're using shares an author. I, I, I can it, it is. If you, if you see this here, okay, the, the, these lines here are straight out of okay, um, so TMS's yeah, um, help files. Yeah. The documentation. Yeah. So uh, that's just how they do it. I don't know enough about the free Pascal way of doing things to know whether that's true or not, but well, I can tell you um, it that's what it is. So free look, Pascal, even in Delphi mode for method assignment, and that free Pascal doesn't support reference to, and therefore uh, the pass to JS compiler, which is kind of a hybrid, uh, kind of a you know free Pascal based something else, um, obviously adds the reference to, but I don't think it would get rid of the requirement for at because they'd have to change the, the existing parser. So yeah, I, that, that's my Guesses and assumptions. I, I know how it works on Free Pascal and Delphi, but I'm not sure about Pass to JS. So. Um, okay. <laughs> Good. Right. So, um, yeah. So, right. So, then the next thing we need to do then is you presumably have got some stuff that's going to come back in here. Yeah. Um, move that to my other screen so I can actually share code with you. So I've got the um, I've got the endpoint that we need to make next, which is the create game. Which I think is is that the one we're on, or are we on get game at the moment? Uh, either I don't mind. Create game is so fine. Um, the, the create game with with the create. If you remember with the create game, this is as far as we got. We haven't actually um, got very far. But, but the, um, the, let's see, did we actually put the code in to say? I don't think you put the call in. Right, game for. So, yeah, that's a good. I think the, the easiest way is to copy it from the server because it's well, all in place. The parameters um, for create game. I, I can at least do that. Uh, so the thing with create game is you actually need to build up a, a structure of data to send 
in the body of the request. Uh, and so that's where it's different from your GET requests. Yep. Um, okay. So, okay, let's do this then. So basically, if we take this and um, copy this, and we'll call this, um, whoops, call this, um, let's see, um, create game. Uh, apparently, I cannot be heard properly, then, which in, is, yeah. you know, just. I th I would yeah. consider that a bonus, but That's apparently just some people part don't. Of all the audio issues that I'm having today with this new interface, uh, and I, I don't want to swap it now because I'd have to change all my audio sources. So, um, give me a second. I'll listen to the stream and see if I can be heard. Yeah, I'm. I'm going out on the stream, so uh, I, I'm just going to continue as as is. Hopefully, I can be uh, heard correctly, at least, or at least heard. Okay. Right. So, um, create game. Uh, we need to um, create uh, game. We're going to have some kind of. Um, we're going to build a game object, basically. Yeah, we're, we're going to build and pass over a, a game object, which we've yet to define. Um, and then we're going to have um, this, which we're actually going to do. Um, so I'm going to paste um, in the chat window for the Apocalypse group the actual object as it appears in the API. Uh, and you won't need most of its fields. We'll go through them as we build the object up. Uh, if I can find the right window, I will do that. Yeah. Okay, there's a paste of JSON for you that we can... It, it's a starting point. It's not actually correct, but it's a starting point. Uh, um, let me just pull that up on my other screen. Do -do -do. Um, hmm. Where did you go? Oh, I have to open this chat. I mean, no, <laughs> that's why I do. Yeah. yeah, you completely. Let me throw out. some passwords in there while chat, you're playing with it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can't see it, hopefully, because yeah. I'm not streaming it. So, um, yeah. Here we go. Oh, I see. Okay. So, so that, 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 I can paste this into oh, my yeah, window, nothing, right? There's no, this is not see. Yeah. So, if we go into here, um, we're actually going to create another unit in a minute, but, um, this is um, like this. Note the use of the special uh, comment braces. <laughs> right, so current question is a string. Session password is a string. Session name is a string. Language ID, also a string. Minimum user is a number. Now, let me just give you the heads up. Uh, for this particular request, you don't have to send in a current question. You don't have to send in a session password. Uh, you do need the session name, you do need the lang ID, min and max user. Uh, you don't need the session ID that's going to be generated for you. Uh, you do need the game, st well, no, you don't need the game state at this point because you're creating a new game. Uh, that will be created for you. And uh, you don't need the user count. So you really only need like three of those fields for the create game call. For Four. The fields, yeah. Right, so for the create... Okay, so if I now that that is also the object you're going to get back, so you might want to put all of those fields into your object anyway, because you'll receive the, the the bits that you don't have to fill in, you will receive. So. Yeah. How how big are these objects? They're not very big, are they? They just come back as a, a, a yeah, like this exactly many fields. Right. Or I mean, something. You're going to get one object, not an array. Okay. 
because we don't because we don't have access to JSON object things. So we we can do this uh, a different way. So let's um, you, with the get games you get an array right, of this JSON object. Entry in an array. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so I iterate through the array, and I'll get yeah, so this. You, Is that right? Or create and a game, you'll get one of these back. If you call get games, you'll get multiple in an array, right? But it's the same object. It's just the the, the game endpoint will always give you the same object back. You need a class of some kind that represents that data type. Class or record doesn't matter to, to me which. Mm -hmm. I believe there is in the web uh, web lib JSON. Whether or not it does the RTTI, I'm not sure, but you, you, I, I would have expected it to. Okay. T game data, something like that, yeah. Oh, uh, you want the, the T game data class? Yeah, so if you go into implementation, you should see data model dot. Uh, oh, goodness. Um, now you're asking. Uh, server source. Data model dot. Do you know, I'm just going to do it my way. It's fine. It's not, it's not a problem. <laughs> it's, 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 it's is a very a, everything is predefined. Just copy it to your source code and we are done. So Here not event, re events uh, of wheel again. In, uh, source units implementation. And the file you want is data model dot game data dot standard. Yeah. However, it is defined as uh, you can easily modify this, of course, uh, but it is defined as a class with an interface and private and public, uh, you know, getters and setters and what have you. But you could just take all of the private members and ditch the rest for your record. Mm, or I could use a class. Or you could but use yeah. either way. Uh, works. I mean, you don't need the getters and setters. They don't do anything. They're just. <laughs> It, it's just. It, I'm sorry, but I'm going to do it my way. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm going to do it this way because uh, we're going to be here forever. Otherwise, if you keep, uh, I, yeah. by the time by the time by the time I've taken out all your getters and setters, I may as well have just, just done it, it the long yep. way. Yeah, exactly. So, um, because you can't use an interfaced record in this web stuff. No, you can use interfaces. You can't use arrays of interfaces. Yeah, that is a um, limitation. That's a bit of a problem. Uh, it's a bit of a big problem, I think, as well. So, whoops. And just uh, for uh, anybody on the stream that cannot hear me, won't be able to hear me say this, but it appears that I'm coming through in mono, and that's part of the problem. So uh, I'm looking to see if there's a setting. But yeah, I maybe I should not cancel my order for the new audio interface. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, it's, it's looking like it's not a, a favourite thing to have done, really, is it? Yeah, it's, it's certainly changed everything about on me, which is just frustrating, but I'll see if I can find a setting to make me uh, stereo again. This lag ID is, uh, I presume, a string, yeah? Uh, yeah, it it's must be a string, string of a couple of characters or so, yeah. Two. Yeah, min user is a, we're going to call it an integer, but it's, it doesn't really matter. Uh, one thing about um, <laughs> WebCore as well is uh, you don't really need to worry what your numbers are called because um, everything <laughs> in Java is the same thing. So uh, calling it an integer, a long or a word or whatever, absolutely pointless because um, they're all converted to um, effectively to a double, I think, or float right. or something Java like that. Because Java, Java's no, great, right? exactly. Game state, that's one thing we might need to copy. Um, and use account as an integer as well. So, uh, so we're going to have um, well, what's a, what's a T game uh, state? I can copy this from somewhere. If I can find it for you, I'll copy paste it into the window. Um, if you tell me what unit, I can probably just copy it directly. Yeah, it's remembering what unit it's in. Uh, I believe it's in data model dot. Um, it's in the a in the API units uh, in data model dot paths is where I would expect it. And I'm just going to confirm that it's there. Units. So the, the the reason is that you're not using the units that are already in place for the API because of limitations. Yeah. And because also, no, no, normally and you also, could use and, and also avoidance of bloat as well. You're, you're, you've got a lot of classes in here that I will not need and are completely irrelevant. And if I pull all of these in, uh, this is a JavaScript web page. So we don't want lots of... I mean, the compiler will obviously... Uh, ah, Greg's just sent me the... Thing. The compiler will obviously um, uh, uh, optimize it down, but even so, it, it, they're never very good. So. Oh, Andrea said thanks for his birthday wishes. <laughs> Happy birthday. Right, so we'll call with this. That's fine. T game state. T game state. Right. That looks to be correct. In fact, I'll leave that there. Documentation. So I will say, just checking the audio device uh, properties, my device reads, the microphone device reads as a two-channel 32-bit 44-100 uh, hertz. Uh, so I, it should be, I, I can hear that it's not stereo, but it should be stereo by all the settings. So I, I don't know what I've got wrong here. Uh, okay, so get games and that's that, get games data. So if they want to create a game, they need to pass a game over am i right uh yeah so if you want to create a game you're going to pass a game in but only with those fields set that you know how to set uh right so the information you've got is the name of the game the min and max users uh and you don't even really need the game state um you just need the lang id session name lang id min max right those four in the middle because you don't have the other data you can't send it okay. Do you know, uh, whenever I do live coding like this, it always reminds me of the social network. Have you, have you ever seen I that? The uh, social seen. network where he goes, he, they're saying, uh, Mr. Zuckerberg, do I understand it that you were um, writing this uh, uh, whilst you were um, live blogging it to the internet and, and uh, also drinking beer and was quite drunk? And it's like, yeah. <laughs> I do you know. So whenever I'm typing this, I feel exactly I like that. I did watch like, that yeah. movie. I don't. I I didn't find it notable to remember any of it. 
Oh, I've seen it loads just of times. Really it's really hilarious. That movie, but... The best part of it is, is that the the um, initial opening bit where he's actually creating um, the face smash and all the rest of it, and splitting up with the um, girl, which I think he calls Erica or something like that, the girlfriend, is actually based on uh, a proper blog post that he made, uh, uh, which is quite funny, really. You know that. Uh, he should be caught out by the internet himself. <laughs> Stuff that you do on the internet lives forever. Right, so um, here we go then. So what we've got is that, and um, we go back to our um, correct game form. Um, somewhere we would have a button that says correct game, which is here. And what that will do is, um, have we called the data module in? I don't think we have, have we? Uh, uh, um, um, data module, I think we called it. I think we called it. Nope. What nope. did we call the data, we call the data module? T main data. T main data module. Okay. Okay. There's a lot of echoes. Let me disable some of that stuff. Uh, give me a second. I'm going to do some audio messing and. All right, I think you can be heard. You say something in. Yeah, we had a little lamb. Wow, that Please was loud. Well. Okay. Um, yep, yeah, we've got you going out on the audio, and do I have me going out? Yes, I'm going out too. Okay, so I've just completely altered all the audio settings live while we're running the stream, so I hope that I haven't completely messed everything up. <laughs> but it looks like uh, the correct audio is now going out, I think. Yeah. So we just have to change this signature here. Um, like so. And then synchronize that up here, which we have. So crate game now matches the signature in the callback. Um, is that correct? Yeah. Oops. And then something horrible. Then something horrible has happened here. Uh, correct game. Game data. The game. Uh, so it's a callback, not so a uh, call. Oh. Yeah, good point. Yeah, what am I doing? Oh, no, no. Great game, call back. Game, game day. Yes, you're right. Great game, and then the game, and then there's a great game, call back. Got ahead of myself, am I? So we're going to create the game here. I need to make sure I'm still watching you. Uh, we're going to create the game here. Like that. So we will. What happens is, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So what happens is, we have a variable sum that we will call um, our game. Whoops. So what we will do in um, here is we would um, we would load all the properties of our game mm -hmm. here, okay, and, and then, then correct. Yeah, um, but this is the callback, no, I, not I the actual create game call. Let me have a look. Well, that's the call cool. because it's on the button, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there, it's not the callback. The callback is here. Great game callback. Okay. So you're right. What I've not done right is that it should actually say, you're quite right, Frank. You should actually say um, the great game. Or, oops, or fact, and it should be a great. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, it would probably help if I, instead of calling that, I called these call back at the end of them, and then we would see more clearly what we were talking about. Don't you think? Yeah, let's add call back to it. Yeah. Um, then it'll be a little bit more clear. Yeah. Well, somehow everything's going to be broken, but that's fine. Um, that's why I mentioned for the first place, let's implement it and then create these interfaces. But okay, <laughs> we will see. <laughs> I'm not going to let Frank be right. <laughs> yeah, looks like. <laughs> Except, of course, it is exactly what's happening. Right, so yes, you're quite right. So, so in, you, in here, so, what, what would okay. happen is it would go, um, hang on. You're, you're passing a reference to the same model you are already in to set a var to the same model? It makes no sense at all. But go, go ahead. Perhaps I, I, I figure out what you're trying to, to get there. Uh, yeah, no, that's not what's happening. So, in here, we want to say. I see what you, I see. What you're doing, you're you're getting the details from the form. You're getting the details into the object. Then you're passing that object into the data module. From the data module, you're making the call with a callback to handle the response, right? Yeah, exactly. And what's missing at the moment is we need somewhere, a central um, model where this game data is set. So we're building this uh, our game, but actually we are going to fill a model with the game, not our little local record here. Right. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, so, okay. So let me just make sure what have I done wrong here. So this needs to be... Um, the correct game callback, doesn't it? So it needs to look like this signature. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, I completely get it. So um, I'm going to vindicate myself from last week. Uh, I, com I completely forgot how to write a set data type last week. <laughs> but it, it happens when you're live streaming sometimes you just lose track of where you are and it's it's not that you're conscious necessarily of the, the fact that you're streaming it just kind of subconsciously slows you down um, but uh, to vindicate myself I did discover what the issue was with that code I'll put it in the chat window in a moment um, so the bug that I was trying to describe was not actually on a predefined set it was on a literal set of numbers and I'll I'll put the code in the chat window and uh, you can compile it and test it and see that it it's you know the not operator does need to be parenthesized or you get it the you, it could easily be gotten the wrong way around um, but yeah when you I, I sympathize with you when you're on a live stream and you're trying to write code and you're distracted yeah well, I'm just effectively ignoring everybody um, so <laughs> which is kind of how yeah works. yeah that's how it works so um, models dot um Gain data. Okay. And we are going to need um, that in here. And um, we're going to call it um, bar. All right. Um, game. Oh, oh, see. I was trying to be clever, and you should never be clever. What we call T game data. T game data. Right. So um, in here, when we get the response and we call the callback, we process the response. So we process the response in here, and we fill the um, model dot um, game data or cut. Sorry, current game with the details from the from the response. Uh, 
Okay, so this um, this probably shouldn't do this. Okay, this callback. Uh, let me see what you're doing there. That's your that's your callback. Yeah, okay. yeah. Because what happens is we, we we create this we create this game data purely as a bunch of parameters to pass over. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we inject that in and we give it a callback. Oh, we call callback. back, come back. And what that will do, we're going to change this callback because what that should do is actually just return the model. Um, uh, it should just say, yes, it worked. And then from then on, you're actually going to deal with um, model dot, whoops, dot um, current. You'll game. be dealing with the global instance of. Yeah, yeah. because uh, uh, that's when you. Now, until that comes back and says, yes, that works, you can't um, assume that you can do anything with the model. Right? Right. Because the model has no data in it. Right. Yeah. Uh, create game callback. <laughs> yeah, call me wrong. <laughs> yeah. Frank, Frank's, that, Frank's that guy you really need on your stream, right? To go, ha ha, I told you so. <laughs> you know who he is? I tell you, who, I tell you who he is. He's Nelson Monsk. Is it it's Nelson Monsk or whatever your name is from um, uh, from The Simpsons? He's the kid that goes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, well, that's a cool back. So we don't need with the great game callback. We don't need to do that. And that, 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 that again, great callback here. So that doesn't matter anymore because that's just to fill it. So in here, this will um, fill the HTTP request and uh, call it. Right. Just as a, an FYI for timing, we've got f uh, what three endpoints: game, user, and turn data. And you're now at the top of our one, so we've got one hour and endpoint. Oh, well, once we've created the basic structure, it's uh, it should be straightforward. Should be quick. So um, uh, it's right. No. I'm, I'm just you, I'm just cracking the whip because I'm the. You need oh, you need no. eight eight up to ten hours to implement everything. I bet you I get it done before then. Right. So. <laughs> Right, so do, 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 model. Do, do. So we need to refer to the model in here, I think. And uh, data module is also going to load the model, so we need to refer to that in here. Um, the, never, the two should never pass things backwards and forwards. That's the main thing. The only reason that we have this here, okay, our game, is um, to pass over set of parameters in a structured way. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, we could have, you know, a module that looked like that yeah. with a load of calls in it and stuff like that. We, we could do that, and then we, we could actually never pass over. Um, Pretty ugly to do it that way, though. Yeah, so what we're going to do is, is build up our game um, from the details off the screen, um, then say create game, and hopefully if it comes back, if it, if it says, um, instead of create game, I'm going to say created game, I think. Yeah, the problem is you have a local procedure, and normally uh, the callback is the part where you decided this, the call has worked with your, with your Boolean. But you can't call anything outside from this callback. So the callback is, let's not say useless, but as the wrong place. You have to uh, get access to the rest of, of your class. Yeah, what I normally do is, is have a um, controller in the middle, and all you're ever doing is calling the controller here, and the controller's got the callback built into that. But if we do that, it's going to add another you, three hours to you, the stream. Yeah, you will be able to access model though because model is a global, right? So inside that handler, you can access. Yeah, model. but if yeah, the game but... is there, you have to switch the view, so you have to get from this call outside. But perhaps you you can well, surprise me with with a with a other te technique at this point. Well, what will happen is at that point, model is containing the game, and then what you're going to do is go on to the next screen. Yeah, so the, even though even though my, yeah. my and comment, how do you do this inside the your asynchronous procedure? your asynchronous so your In your create button click once you call create game execution yeah. will continue from that point because you're asynchronous yeah. so the callback will do its thing in the background and you can actually add you could add a line to the create 
uh, button click handler to switch to a different screen because unlike uh, because we're async right so you don't need to you don't yeah, need to do I, it in, I, in I that. fully that, understand that asynchronously is be sure yeah. but from this point you have no access to the outside because it's a local procedure uh, no, let, let, let me just explain what's happening, right? We're, we're passing this call back here just to make sure it's in the same place so we can see it, right? And what will happen then is it will call the next screen. It's not going to actually deal with model dot anything at all. In fact, I could go back down here uh, and remove this completely. Because it, uh, uh, because uh, we don't okay, want it okay. to access it. Uh, let's go ahead and try it and just see where we get. Just surprise me. <laughs> yeah. Let's go go ahead and go ahead and right. make the call. Right. So first of all, let's uh, we've got to load this with our bits. So what have we got then in the class? I can't remember. Well, we don't care about current question. We don't care about. I suppose we should session session lang ID min and max users. That's a session name. Lang yeah. ID. ID, min and max. Yeah. And again, the easiest way is to copy the settings out of the server because there's everything set. Right. Uh, oh, ignore me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, kind of what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start off. names going to come from your form. It is? Whereabouts? Uh, game name. Your little oh. edit box there, that's your session name. Yeah. Uh, game name. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, Lang ID the same, you should have a combo box, not that it matters because we currently only support one language, but Um, I think we said uh, Ah, that's a little bug there. See that? Yeah. It, enter to set. it puts the enter character in. Mm. We'll that's come back nice. to that later. <laughs> yeah, that's that's an annoying little bug. <laughs> If uh, if um, Bruno's watching, Bruno, there's a bug there. You can fix that. <laughs> um, Bruno is the uh, the I, uh, make... CEO of TMS. If, for those that don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm going to make this statement here that that you know would probably be very unpopular, but um, it's probably not a bug in the TMS code. Oh, right, I get mm, it. Because it, oh, know, I'm keeping out of that one. <laughs> T TMS is dealing with uh, UTF-8, right? Because that's pretty much the Unicode of the web. Um, so TMS is probably doing like a proper Unicode thing. And I expect that the IDE, given the age of the object inspector, is possibly even not aware of Unicode. Yeah. yeah. Spinning users. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dot. Please tell me there's a value. Oh, and it's a single. Oh, great. Then, unit value. Just round it. <laughs> um, trunk. Trunk would work. Oh, I'm just wondering why that's a single. Is there not an integer value for it? Maybe a different control or maybe a setting that it can... I mean, I would expect that it would give you a single back even if you put it into an integer mode because you can't. You don't want to have the two different properties. So the value yeah. is on one property, but you can set it to integer mode. It'll never give you anything but a, an int. Um, session ID that comes don't back from... It. That comes up from server. Don't need it, don't need it, don't need it. Now, that's well, actually, set, that's actually an integer. It. We're going to... What? Uh, no, go, go ahead and set it to the enum. I don't want to confuse you, but... Uh, what, what What's an integer? So it's effectively being cast uh, as an integer on the server side. The enum what is? Game, game state. Uh, yeah, but we... But you can send it in as the... You, you send it in as the name. Sorry, I didn't want to confuse you. So what... So should we do that? Yeah, just go ahead and send that. This, this, this value is ignored from the server yeah. anyway. It's not... Yeah, be... I, do, I just want to set it to something. 
Uh, and user count is presumably going to be zero to start off with because you can send nil. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Okay, so does that make sense? I think so. It makes sense so well. far. Yes, very yeah. good. <laughs> and um, probably want cats up here to track gang. Right. Let's see what doesn't compile then, shall we? Bing, 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 bing. Error one. Probably because my wrong number of parameters for new game callback. At, at symbol. Oh, yeah. yeah. That should work. Uh, that's not bad, is it? No, ton no, of code no. and it compiled first time. Right, so... If it compiles, that's... ship it. Well... It will compile, but we're not actually doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> now we have to put in the uh, the uh, bits in here. Right, so create game. Right, so how do we set this up before then? Oh, uh, yeah. So... What's the API endpoint for the create games? Have you got that it's in a the same? Line? It's the same endpoint, but it has a HTTP method of put. Push. Oh, okay. Put, P U T. Yeah, I understand. But... Sorry, I think someone said push. Did, was it Frank? It's... Yeah, push for create, put for update, right? No, post for create. Uh, sorry, post. Uh, post check. for create. It's post and yes. put. I think it is. Um, I'm going to double check the server side, but I'm pretty sure we want. Yeah, you're right. A post for create, a post method, and I'm just going to double check it in the handler that it is a post. Ugh. Post for create, put for update. This is a rule I think you mentioned at just the first lesson. Yep. Get put is update, post is create. So yeah, we want a post call. No, not put. You want to post? Okay. You kept saying put a lot. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I confused put and post. I always confuse put and post. It's, right, so yeah. post. So uh, that's that. Now, um, there's a bunch of parameters we obviously need to set. Am I right? Uh, mm. Yeah, I mean, all those parameters that you just put in now need to be turned into JSON to put in the body of the call. So you've got you should have a body parameter there somewhere. Where I see your headers. Where is right. your request body? Custom command. Don't know what that is. Post data. You see, you've got a post data uh, there. Uh, right. Okay. So mm, there's going to be some header stuff, though, isn't there? Uh, not for this call. Uh, there will be for future calls, but uh, this call is you can create a game without an auth string. Um, but what you need is that that post data needs to be the the JSON of the object that you're sending. Um, what? Uh, so you, the the JSON that I posted to you in the Apocalypse coding group. Right. If you just as an example, if you were to take that and hard code that string onto the post data property of your, your in your object inspector right now, you've got a post data property. Oh, I see. You mean this JSON? Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. So you you have to implement T game data to JSON for this call. Essentially, right. yeah. Okay. Well let's do it. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. I understand. So I need to And I'm I'm kinda half expecting that the TMS web call will have some kind of serialization call where you can give it an object and it'll turn it into JSON. Um, I'm just going to look and see if that's the case. Because in the past, I found that it didn't do JSON to object. Um, right. And now you yeah, need the object, yeah, the object yeah. to JSON, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, let's put it in here for now. Um, and then we'll probably move it to somewhere more sensible. So what we're going to have, we're going to have game data. 
Um, yeah, you have to find a record. You can put this function in the record because you need it there. Yeah. Uh, well, the, uh, the record may change to be an object at this rate because I, I think, I don't know how the RTTI is going to work with a record, but ma make the method and then we can always move it. Hang on, I'm thinking. Right, so... Uh, you, you can just do the easy way, hard code the JSON into the, into the record. That's the easiest way and done in two seconds. Well, kind of cheating, though. So you mean uh, like that? Frank's suggesting that you actually make uh, a class method on the record that does two JSON. Just okay. a function to the record, and you are done. But isn't that the same as this? Uh, it'll, do, it'll effectively yeah. do the same. The the you go ahead and do this. Uh, this is fine. Uh, and yeah, then, I, what what yeah. what you're saying is you're saying go into the record in uh, here. Was that it? Yeah. Yep. And you uh, could just make a that, class a class function. Or actually, just call it two. A, just call it two JSON. It, it's not a, it's not a class function. Yeah, my bad. It's not a class function, but effectively a a method on this record. Uh, and then just have it so like a string. So with, without params, no need to pass the same object yeah, yeah, to I'll the same object. Yeah. It's only because I just did it that way. All right, we'll get rid of that. Don't need that. We, we can call in the JSON unit. It's not a problem. Yeah, I mean, uh, you'd, the, the point is that if you, pull, if you pull the JSON unit in here, then as you add, I guess if you're going to add more classes to this one unit, you'd only need to use the unit the JSON unit wants. But I mean it doesn't it would have worked the other way as well. There's little difference in it except coding style really. And so we don't need that as we said. Yeah so the easiest way is just say result equals to uh, open brackets statement statement open close bracket stuff. Uh, you have done with a copy paste of this stuff there in, in two minutes. But if there's a uh, if if the web lib JSON uh, has a method for do both direction to JSON and from JSON, perhaps with an object, you have to change the record to, to an object. And um, yeah, and that's why my first question was if the web lib to JSON is be able to handle a class with the RTTI to make it to JSON and from JSON, you can just copy the code from our already implementation and have an interface. Uh, because you don't have to freeze the object in your asynchronous call. What you're saying is do that. Essentially, yeah. 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 Um, unfortunately, I don't think that it supports... Let me just check that. I'm looking at some code I've got. If it doesn't um, support it, you can always just hard code the string in. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not a massive... Amount of stuff, but right. I don't, I don't think. I don't think oh. you're going to get away with using rest.json, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, let's see what happens. Well, if we compile it, I uh, might, of course, exclude it. Yeah, yeah. it says. But it I'm expecting that, that weblib.json contains a similar method. That's what I was expecting. No, it, it, it actually doesn't, unfortunately. Okay. So what does it contain? Um, does it contain like uh, JSON object, JSON array, JSON value pair? Uh, does it contain those things? Yeah, hang on. Let me just pull up what I've got. Um, I've got <laughs> because if it, if it does contain, you know, the objects that represent JSON data, then you can just populate those objects and, and return the string. So what it supports is these. That. Oh, perfect. Yeah, no, that's good. So what you can yeah. do is just do a JSON object equals JSON object create. Uh, and then each of those items is a tJSON pair, which I'm guessing you'd have an equivalent pair class to add to the object. Yeah, so there's a... Just do um, on pair. Yep. So your tJSON will your your JSON object 
you'll probably need yeah. to do like uh, js dot add jo to add the json object to the json outer thing uh whatever that is uh, well you need so you need to create that first so a tjson object dot create because the json object has no method to json string perhaps we will see yeah, so create that first and then i reckon your next line of code is probably going to be js dot add if it has such a method no okay oh. is there a is there any no it's a, oh, the json oh, object oh. is a parser try well, the JSON object if is a there's a, J, a jo dot to string, to string or to json string yeah. if there's this method we just have to add the pairs to the jo object yeah uh the, frank's right just uh see if jo has a, a two string method uh, to JSON, yeah, to JSON string, to JSON string is p perfect. So just add. So uh, delete that the... object to the JS. Uh, you don't need JS. Delete that that variable. Set the parser. Yes. Okay. Uh, don't need it. And then in the JO, it's it actually had a to JSON method as well as a to string. So you want the yes. to JSON object. What? Uh, where you've uh, got to string, uh, remove yeah. that and press dot again. And you'll find it's got a two JSON. This one, yes. That one, right. So that that could be a That'll direct be a assigned to the result. Oh, uh, I get it. Okay. So, right. So you'll need to add so the we... pairs. Basically, it should JO should have an add method to add the pairs. Yeah, but I'm still going to need to go J. P. You'll need to create it, but let's just check that the method exists on the right. object first, right? What, what here? Yeah, if like you do this, jo dot. dot, does it have an add? Yeah, add pair, right? So yeah. you're going to have to create the pairs individually, one pair for each of the parameters that you're putting in, uh, yeah. and it's then easy. add them. Yeah. Can Can you write jp create with two params? Um, I'm not sure. Let's find out. Whoops. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, you yeah. Value. so you can just uh, add pair JP TJP T JSON pair create without the var. Yes. So TJSON pair dot create, and then you can put your name values in each each value. You're probably going to have to create. You'll have a each value which is not a string. You will have to create a tjson number object in place of yeah yeah yeah. yeah. So, so so you can provide uh, it as strings no matter I think yeah uh, no because if you provide it as a string it will put the quotes around it and then the deserialization won't work yeah we will see what the compiler does to this <laughs> explorations in webcore <laughs> yeah we are all expert remember this. <laughs> Yeah, we're definitely excellent. Right, so um, where's my class here? Uh, do you have the correct spelling with all the little uh, no, uh, cases? I, I, no, the I'm lower cases. Yeah, in your in it, your comments. You know, it, you can do some um, kind of things where you decorate the uh, classes with things oh, like no, that. Don't do that. Then do RTTI, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm just putting it here just so that we can add the lower case. So actually, they're all here, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, there we yeah go. That's, that's, that's a trick here. Yeah. And just as an uh, FYI, and I didn't actually know this, I, I, you know, I've been doing JSON for a long time, and I, maybe I did know it at one point and I forgot, but I didn't know this, but it's common practice to lowercase the first character of every uh, pair in a JSON object. I didn't actually know that, and it, it can mess up some frameworks. It's um, We're not going to add all of these. I'm just doing it for the sake of brevity. Right, so current question, uh, session. Oh, in fact, let's just um, do that and do that and say that, uh, that. Of that problem. Okay. And then this one we need to say uh, it's got um, we want to actually replace with is that right? 
Just a, mm. a, 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 a no. comma something. Comma that. And then we'll correct for the ones that are wrong. Right, so current question, um, we don't need to add that at all. Yeah, but you still should well, actually, add no, the member. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. I, you, yeah, ignore me. I'm talking nonsense. Right, so... Is... Um, Oh, to be correctly part, par no, you, you you can just leave it empty because you never sent this to. The, to yeah, but we, this method is a method to serialize this object. We should just make it serialize all the pro the, the properties correctly. It doesn't matter if we don't actually use them. Um, yeah, never. Yeah. Yeah, it, I mean, it it makes it makes no difference. I mean, just from the the sense of. Writing it correctly, you know, we come down to maintain this somewhere down the line and want to send that data Then we've got to find a bug where we put in a null string instead of a so Assume you write a class to debug. Did you receive this data correctly? And you send back the data you received. Yeah, and uh, and it doesn't work. It doesn't know. Yeah <laughs> You know, you're like no, it's, it's incorrect. You're so missing some stuff. This is where I think um, Frank was at, at this point, uh, please do a copy of lang id uh, 1.2 one comma two because if the lang id is uh, greater than two chars, we you got an exception from the server. Oh, I don't understand. Uh, so Frank's saying if we somehow put in three characters into the lang id of the object, that's going to cause the server to you. explode. Because it's it's limit. No, 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 not the session name. Uh, the oh, sorry. lang yeah, id. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> Left for a two. Uh, three. Oh, uh, it's three, isn't it? Two. 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 Yeah. So the, the oh, normal three. idea was to use the language IDs as the international standard, like US minus US or DE minus DE, but we have implemented the database. Oh, someone at the stream have and had changed the database uh, to a Varcha two. Yeah. Uh, uh, that one don't would... want to name him. <laughs> <laughs> that would be me. Um, so the um, the next field that you need to fill in, the min user, this is where uh, Frank and I disagree, but I think you need to create a tjson number object. Sure that there's no overlay, you can just pass three. Uh, no, if you pass in a string, I'm pretty darn No, no not, not a string. There might be an overlay. Oh, it might be an override, yeah. There, there may be an overload. Just try yeah. a min user. I bet I bet you can because it's probably a, a T JSON value or something, isn't it? Well, there, yes. there may be a yeah, there may be an overload that lets you just put in the min user numeric value. Oh, wait You're a minute! Missing, missing um... too many brackets on the line before. I think. Yeah. Many brackets on the line before. Yeah, that's it. No. No. Oh, oh. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. So, no, it's not that. I'll tell you what it is. It is saying that he doesn't like it. Doesn't like it. Doesn't have the overload. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see one way. If it doesn't compile, all you've got to do is uh, uh, tjson number dot create or something of that ilk, and it will put it in. Session ID, that's a string, isn't it? Yep. Everything else can be considered a string from here. Uh, unless you're actually using an enum for the next type, then you need the name of the enum value. So I just send over what? Uh, well, you'll, you need the name of the... So it, it wants to be GS green room, so you need the name of the enum value. We might need to put a case statement in unless we can convert it to a... I Do don't think we doing this by name. We're doing this by integer. No, we're sending the name according to the according to the JSON packet that I have anyway. We might be doing it by integer. Really? So, yeah, I but okay, se try sending it as an integer if it explodes we'll change it. We we have no f no functionality to to uh, at at any side to do to do uh, the word to. Yeah, okay. yeah, we so don't do that. So it's an integer. 
Okay, so we want to cast game state as a integer when you pass it in. Okay, all right, yeah, that's that's fine. I was going to actually just create an array of string and then just um, no, 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 worry about that. Yeah, no need. So, um, what was it called? Games? Whoops, game state or something? Game state, yeah. And again, it will hard cast it integer s integer yeah. brackets. Did you remember if it was a u int or an int? Either, that'll work. It Yeah. And then use account is just a use account. I have a sneaky suspicion that this is going to not compile um, purely because of uh, the numeric values. Like, yeah. So does that look okay? I think it looks okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hit oh, it. We don't, we don't want that one. That's simple. Uh, should compile. Oh. Yeah. Wait, wait, so oops. you should have an object of uh, something like tjson number. Should uh, there should be a class in that unit called tjson number, and you don't actually have to declare it there. Uh, I know. I'm just seeing where you're just seeing what it one. is. Yep. Okay. So just do a tjson number dot create with the value as a parameter, and then you you're golden. I just heard a fairly loud crash come from the other room, and sounds <laughs> like my son may be unattended and, again. And, and this this should compile with a JSON number as part of. Yeah, and the the you missed one. The um, game state should be passed as a yeah. Oh yes, yes, yes. And yes, use yes. account. And and perhaps do a free of your object. Uh, shouldn't need to free it. Yeah, yep. it's an object. It's created. It's a normal tjson object. It's a class. It is, but it's also created as a JavaScript object, which is completely reference counted, so you don't need to fret. Yeah, you don't need to. Right. So um, just because I'm perverse, I want to do this. And this, and this, and this, and this. It's the only thing that G-Experts can't line up properly. Right, so uh, that looks good so far. Don't, don't like that space there. Are you sure this gjson object is reference counted in the weblib json? It definitely is. Yeah, I, I've used it before. It definitely is. Absolutely, so it's not a problem. Absolutely, everything you declare. I don't think. I don't think you can right. actually free it. I think if you try and free it, you, you get an get exception. Error. Yeah. Yes. Um, literally everything you create in because it's compiling to JavaScript. Absolutely everything in JavaScript is reference counted. There's no native types that are not reference counted. So. Even you know, oh, like numbers. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right. So now, next thing we need to do is we need to say HTTP create oops, create game dot um, post data. Oh, it's just a string, is it? Okay. Yeah. Um, it's a game to JSON. Game dot. Um, Dude, I'm just going to say there is one thing I'm slightly nervous about on in other frameworks I'm assuming post data is the body of the request and in other frameworks it's called body because you can send a body with a put a post and maybe just put and post but uh, if this framework assumes that you can only send a body with a post request that could be I you wouldn't worry about it I think it will work um, I think no, I think that's the, requ the the correct property. Hmm. It's the only yeah. one named anything like so, the one we need. I'm just worrying. Yeah, worried if I that remember, it they it. do have. Um, yeah, but was post is post and put should be. They both have a body. Yeah, they both have a body, right? But why call the property post data as opposed to po uh, you know body? Right. So maybe the person that wrote this doesn't realize that put has a body. I, I'm just. It, it'll probably be I fine. Think, <laughs> I think what you do is we just uh, try it and see. Let's hit it try and see. see what's the worst that can happen. Right. So first, uh, uh, the other thing we haven't done is we haven't actually. Um, oh yeah, we have. You create that, done that, and then create game response. So what we'll do here is we will just literally say um, what we did before, which is we will get, go here, steal this line. Yeah, and then we have to implement the from JSON, but there should be a functionality in this. Well, no, library. because 
this is this is uh, we're just going to output this as a debug to see what came yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, I know. But actually, yeah. when we get to decoding the JSON, I think that tjson dot parse probably will will do that. Yes, so. it, it absolutely will. It, we we can we can um, get JSON value as well. It supports that. And yeah, the so JSON parse would probably just create the object uh, oh, it'll stuff. It'll create the object list, yeah, and then we'll have to yeah. decode it. Yeah, yeah, yeah per hand. By hand, yeah. Anyway, so sh -do -do, will you compile? Yes, you will. Come on. Aha! It worked. Now I need to do secret stuff in the background that nobody can see. And um, move that well, over. Don't oh, do it there. No, actually, well, actually, it doesn't matter because yeah, it doesn't you're, you're show already anything. signed in. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't show anything um, untoward. Um, you have to do those. Go to the right place to get the source code, um, which I believe there's a function in here to do that. Let me. Um, ooh, there's a function somewhere that says. Go and explore. There you go. So um, I'm, I'm actually sitting ready to hit the script on the server to do copy site, so you don't have to just upload it, and when it's done, I'll I'll hit it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do this in full view, everybody, because um, there's no passwords or anything that's going across. So when you compile, for those that don't know it, it, it doesn't. If you're a Delphi person, you would expect everything to go in here, or depending on what your target was. Okay. So if it was a Mac, then you'd have Mac or something, and you deploy it or whatever. But with TMS Web, um, it does create an executable. I notice I'm running in, in uh, uh, debug mode. Okay. Um, it does create an executable, but that executable is uh, pointless. All it does is just tries to run the thing in the browser. Um, we are not doing what you, the normal um, workflow for TMS Web Core. Normally in the workflow, what happens is if I'm debugging a, a Web Core app, I actually do it in my local browser and then eventually put it up on the server and test it there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but what WebCore does is it creates this additional folder called TMS Web. And because I'm in debug mode, it, uh, I mean, if it was in release, it'd also say release. That's the stuff that I need to put up on the server. Okay. So um, we've already set up before um, uh, Apocalyptic Server. And we have a thing called Site. Which is Cross site. Origin Resource String Sharing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, a comment from Ian. Yeah. So Ian commented that if you stick to get and post, it makes uh, course handling easier, which is the cross origin um, security right. concerns in the browser. Um, and, in, and in fact, uh, I'll tell you a little story about that. Um, the project just I just worked that? on. Yeah, it's up. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Copying your um, across now. I'll tell you a little story about that. I um, worked on a pretty big project and uh, it was the one I talk about in the um, Fireside Chat series that go on your browser folks, I'm on the welcome page at the top at the moment and um, we had a lot of problems with cross origin um, uh, scripting because um, they can have tablets that uh, run the, um, the browser code and then it's uh, talking to a browser um, a custom um, web browser mm -hmm. and we want to limit them to only um, working on certain networks but those networks could appear to be cross origin right. and, um, and I had to put a lot of cores handling in I didn't know about cores until I did it um, it just never came up never had a problem before and uh, I'm like oh my God, what's this and uh, Google are very obscure in their documentation about this until you hit the mother load of the documentation, and they've got loads of information about it. Um, but it, it basically will stop your scripts dead in its tracks, and you'll wonder why it's not working, and that's why. Yeah. Cross-origin scripting. So you, you have to add a load of um, course headers in if you are um, doing certain functions on there. So, yeah. Right, so that's uploaded. So in theory... Um, <laughs> in theory? <laughs> yes, in theory, we should go here and hit F5... And we should be writing the new thing. So let's, um, my name is Ian, and we're going to uh, start a game. And, skip and we're going to call it um, Test Game 1. Oh, you Minimum might need zero, 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 0001, just from experience. Why? Because we're going to test this many times. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> ye of little faith. <laughs> um, GB, which That's I'm sceptical will work probably. Now, um, we're going to um, call this up as well. At the moment, you'll notice in the console there is no um, uh, nonsense. Um, all our sources are here. So if we click on here, you remember the classes we just created? Mm -hmm. Oh, look, there they all are. Right. So it's, it's very bizarre. Um, don't ship your uh, shipping code with uh, in, in debug mode, otherwise you're giving away uh, your product. Right. Anyway, so um, if we hit on create game, what I expect to see is a call going up to the server's API, sending the JSON over, and then some kind of response back here saying um, the GUID of the, um, the yeah. game. Yeah, well, what you'll actually um, get back is a full game object with a GUID. Yeah. Or an error. Yep. So <laughs> let's click on great game. Um, I don't see an error. Okay, so let's just um, go up. And there's your great game response. So it's working. Great. So we, don't, yeah, we now just need my... to debug that, uh, de de deconstruct that back into your game object, into the model. Yeah. So for the viewers sitting at home, <laughs> um, we've now proven that um, we can send up a response. We've sent over the JSON. We've done the hard work now because we've um, created the thing uh, properly. Um, this here, this function of undeclined, uh, undefined, by the way, is uh, in uh, Bootstrap. <laughs> um, it's a bug in Bootstrap. Do you send this to a different server? Because it's not listed at the moment. Um, it's... I, I know, know why. I sent it to the server you told me. I know me why just... it's not listed. So the very next thing, before the game becomes public and visible from the get endpoint, we have to add the first user to it. Uh, oh, until the first user's there. Oh, right, yeah. yes. Right. So, 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 okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to go and um, debug what comes back. So we need to um, go back to where are... And actually, when we come to do that, I'm, I don't want to confuse Ian by thinking ahead, but when we come to do that, we can take advantage of the async, I think, or do we have to wait for the game to be created? I guess we have to wait for it. Okay. We will have to wait for it to yeah. be created. Because you can't add a user to a game that hasn't yet been created, so. Correct. Right. Yeah. Um, right, so where did we do our game form? Oh, yeah, we did this. So then we did that, and then we said... In the class, we said that, didn't we? So now what we really want is a, a an opposing from JSON. Yep. from JSON. Yeah. So now we will say... Um, Function from JSON returns type of record. Um, well... Yeah, this is a class function from JSON yeah. const a string static. Yeah. Um. And it's okay because you're just doing assignment of a record. Um, as this is compiling to free Pascal, I don't know, but I think you probably need to make the method static as well. You have to, in, in any cases. Right. Opt. So uh, you're, you're good. You, you've got JSON string as string. Uh, close your bracket. Go to the end of the line, semicolon, static. Or like this? Yep, and then semi yes. yep. Why do I have to be static? Uh, because it's a class method. Oh, yes, because obviously I need to return these things as static data. Otherwise, it, will come, it won't work. Yeah, yep. good. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Is that correct? Yes. So now... Let's get all this stuff. It's going to do the reverse effectively. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, but I don't know if that's going to be useful to you, but we'll see. Well, um, we'll see. Right, so... Um, you're going to need a, a, a JS, TJSON that you had before. Right. Um, or you can check, has a SJO object something from... from the JSON object might have a parse method. Yes. Okay. Parse JSON value. Well, Here we go. That's just a value, isn't it? Is that? Yeah, I but it's going to parse the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, JSON value is also a JSON object, isn't it? Uh, well, what does it return? A JSON value. Yeah. So that could be cast as a JSON object, probably. 
yeah. yeah. So you can use that method uh, pass JSON rather than the JS object I suggested, and give it your string. Like that. Yeah, but then yeah. we've got to assign uh, it back to JO. Yes. Which I don't know how that's going to work. Can you assign the object after having done the pass? Maybe. Okay. Yes. Yeah. No, 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 no. Let's do this. Okay. I think you'd be better off doing JO equals tjson dot pars, uh, and that that would just make it clearer. That is exactly what I was going to do. So, you you can do this. You can say um, tjson. Uh, it did have a pars method before. <laughs> yeah, you can just tjson dot create dot pars. If this is a reference count, it's no need for right. dealing with, a, with it. I don't believe it, but here it's a cross compiler, so I have no clue. Ian's actually <laughs> pasted the solution for you in the. In the <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's it. What? He said what? I can't see that, so. Um... Don't worry, you, you're on it. You got it. Yeah. So yeah, what I can't, I, I, I literally, I literally cannot see what he's doing. So, uh, da, 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 da. so T J S on object, and then I do this J S dot. No, just do J S dot pause. Oh. That's all you need. Yeah, ignore that. I, it, that was a. That was a typo. Uh, you don't need. Oh, cast as JSON object. Yeah. Do you need to do that? Mm. Yes, you do. Yeah. Yeah, you're good. Pass and then. Ring. What's the result of pass? Um, Control click pass. Uh, it's a JSON object already, JSON so you object, don't need yeah. to cast it. Good stuff. And then you can just reverse all your. Uh, you'll have to do. Um, so there must be a method to get pair by name, right? So. Yeah. We can no. We can do this. Um, yeah, you're, you're right about most of these not being any use. So what you can do is um, dot. Uh, it's got to be a get value or something. Yeah, get chase on value by name. You don't need to say by name. It, the default is by yeah, name. Right, yeah. I, I was just reading it that way. Um, yeah. Then the question is, what does that return? Because you, you probably need to choose whether it's a string or a integer or a... So it's a, stri a string. It, it's a string, but for the ones that aren't strings, you can just convert them. Right, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, da, 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 da. so we've done current question. Yeah, so we just, let's get rid of some of these. Right. Control so session shift record. Pump. <laughs> yeah, you would you would think that would do it, but um, we're not going to bother doing that. Um, no, you deleted your needed identifier. What? What now? Right. And by the way, all of these are result dot. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Question. Current questions. Result dot current question. Because you're passing mm. back the. Just to make it more awkward. That's all. This is not as good as the right doing this. Right. Um. <laughs> How does it feel to be driving development with two people sitting over your shoulder, <laughs> backseat driving? It's really great fun, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> This this is this uh, it's like an extended job interview, isn't it? Like, you know, <laughs> how are you doing, Ian? I'm doing great. Yeah, it's going really well. Um, just everybody, sharp. <laughs> Max user. I should, what I should do is I shall use this in in future. Like when people say, "Do, do you know how to program?" I go, "Watch this video <laughs> session ID." And you'll see that I can't. <laughs> you see that I can't code. I need at least three yeah, people exactly. helping me. <laughs> games, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I find it funny. We were talking about, um, Frank and I were talking about the backseat coder uh, phenomenon uh, in a previous stream. And I said, well, I do like buddy coding because you've got the 
benefit of more people's knowledge, right? And that, that can be really useful. But also, mm-hmm. let's say I've missed a semicolon, but I know I've missed it. I'm going to go back and get it. Then you've got this tweet in your, on your shoulder saying, go and get that semicolon, right? And it's, it can be quite off-putting in some ways as well. With RTTI, we could do this much more intelligently. Yeah. Um, in fact, sure, we, already, I mean, we already have on the server because we have RTTI on the server. So. Yeah, I mean, there is RTTI that they've got, but it's pretty... Um, it's a, it's a brand new version one product, right? I mean, it's new tech. Well, well, it's not so much that. It's that it's relying on... Um, someone else's compiler mm-hmm. you know uh, to provide the functionality and they're playing catch up 1.4 this is 1.3 something that i'm using of um web 1.4 uses the latest compiler and with that you do get um anonymous records and anonymous methods and stuff like that the things that you sort of come to rely on when you're coding delphi um but they're still never going to do array of uh, interface, for example, they've actually said that. They said uh, we'd, we're never going to do it. So you that's know. disappointing me. Um, hopefully, the um, hopefully the anonymous methods that they put in past the JS actually get backported into the Free Pascal compiler as well, because that is the one thing that really stands out as a missing feature um, in the compiler. So oh, there's there's, goes back it. there's plenty of things that I would um, like them to have. Mm-hmm. Let's and, see what hit compile brings up. <laughs> yeah, and also whilst we're at it, yeah, but it does disappoint me. The array of interface is a big deal for my coding style because I do everything to interfaces, and it's very difficult to set up. Um, I think array of object might be a concern as well. Um, here's one of those examples. You just put a period instead of a comma. I don't remember what the... I think it's web tools. So, uh, uh, you're missing your isn't... users there. You just uh, put a period after the oh, tells. That's why. What, wasn't... What's, a dif- what's the difference between, uh, let's say, an, in, an array of, of integers, an array of pointers to an array of interfaces? Uh, it's to, it, it's just the way that they have implemented the Java script, and I think they said there was a technical reason why they can't do it. I don't know what it is, but they said anything that is um, referencing a specific area of memory can't be used. So no pointers, no array yeah. of oh, interfaces. No pointers also. Okay. There are no pointers. So basically, JavaScript treats everything as an object, right? Even an integer is an object. Um, but the objects, I, I think they've fixed this now. They now have like constructors and stuff like that on objects, but certainly in older versions of JavaScript, there were no constructors because the objects were not objects of class. There was no, there are no classes. They are just objects, right? Wow. So, um, and, and even, even methods are actually objects. They're object properties of another object. Uh, and the whole memory model is set up to basically link everything together so that when you dispose the the browser page it disposes everything right and so the the technical concern i think with interfaces is that they are um basically referencing an object so you can do it if you're willing to say that an interface and an object are actually the same thing but then if you want to make an array of implementations of interfaces you've got uh, no way to do weak referencing so you, that's that's why you yeah, can't. Yeah, but but when 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 I can do uh, an array of objects, mm-hmm. I can just do an object which has a private member of an interface. Of an interface, it, potentially, but I think there's a problem with array of object as well for the same reason. Um, oh. So okay. Basically, what I was I was looking at the possibility of building kind of a UI framework that over a web socket you would say, here's all the windows, go go draw them to the client, right? And I, I couldn't build up an actual client-side model of the UI because of these limitations. But what I could do is send in, like, the equivalent of sending a list of records, and each record represents either a window or a button or a, whatever it might be, uh, and then have the JavaScript reparse it every time and keep a reference to the objects that it already has created. So you can do that, but you couldn't do like this parent-child VCL style 
arrangement. It was a, a real technical hurdle when I started trying to build this UI framework for it. Uh, and quite frankly, it, it led me to the it led me to the position that if I want to actually build that as a usable tool, I wouldn't use Paz to JS to do it. I would just build the client in JavaScript because the whole transpiling thing just complicates what is actually trivially easy to do in JavaScript if you have to do it that way. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's an annoying right. limitation for me. So there's our stuff. Um... Create games response was here, wasn't it? Yeah. So, is there any um, response from the uh, uh, server that indicates whether or not creating our game was successful? Yeah, if, you it, have. if it throws you an error like a 500 or anything like that, yeah. then it went wrong. And you'll right. get so it, if an error occurs, so if everything goes correctly, you'll get a 200, right? A HTTP 200 code, everything was okay. And you'll also get the object returned to you. If something goes wrong, you'll get a different error code, most likely a 500. Uh, and instead of getting a JSON object, you receive a string which contains the error message. Um. So your response, you should have a, H, a status code or HTTP code on the response object. No, it's just a string. No, there's definitely, there is some kind of response code. I've seen it before. Um, yeah, a response next. is just a string. Uh, a, yeah, a response at the moment, you don't have an object, you have a string. If you look at your procedure declaration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Um, you, can, you can check if there's a, there's no, a no, no, from a... JSON inside or you have something at your object level. Oh, you should get an um, object right on response. Um, like sender or something. <laughs> yeah, but there isn't. No, there, there's hanging. Oh, there, was a um, would, would there is a the, way of doing this. Would it be on the request object? I, I can't see that being right. No, it's not. Um, that that wouldn't work. Let me just check. I'm, I'm looking at their documentation because I know... If I can interrupt this. you just to look at the event handler above on request response, is that the one that you should be using? Yeah, so you get your request sent back as an object, so you can probably read the request for a status code or something. Status. Or is, is it a, a string? A string. Do you get a response code or anything? Oops. Oh, come on. <laughs> Right. If status is a, I mean, you've got ready state, send, response. I think to status it. might be the one. But I'm just thinking, let me look through their documentation because I know they've got a, a, a thing somewhere where they say if the status is this, then do this. Um, yeah, and Ian just said it's got a, a state and a message in the. It, it, basically, um, Ian's watching us delayed, so he's catching up to what we just said. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. What's he, what's he saying then? Um, well, well, he's not indicated uh, how to actually handle it, but I'm, I'm going to make a guess here that dot .status will read 200 as a string uh, if it's correct. Yeah, that, yeah that would so, be my guess. so is that on here or is that on the response? Yeah, it's on, it's on your request object because you've got a request and a response up there, uh, but your response oh, is just a string. So your request, you want a dot .status uh, and just say if dot .status equals 200 and we can... Oh no, you're over typing yourself. Yeah. Uh, and we can. Oh, oh come do, on. Do it again. Ah. Uh, yeah, I'm, guess, I'm going to guess that you can then uh, check to see if it's 200, and we can always run it to see what happens. Yeah, so if. Uh, and so we'll actually take all of this. 
actually, I think we're going to change all of that anyway. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, you could you could perhaps just see if uh, a response contains the JSON brackets because the our well, errors didn't contain the JSON brackets. You could check it that way, but I, I, I'm I'm going to make I, I know I'm making a guess that it works this way, but um, it would be nice to catch. 200, 500, because there are cases, I mean, it doesn't matter to us for our application here, but there are cases where you'd send a, send a different code. For example, I was building a REST service for work last week, and I sent back, I think it was a 203, which is basically a message that says everything went okay, but this server isn't handling it, so I can't give you a response. Uh, so yeah. we, we took it, and we, you know, it's been sent off to the server that cares about it, but that's not me. So uh, yeah, it'd be nice to be able to properly get the codes and have an else condition to display the exception if that, that needs to happen. Yeah. So... And of course, the absolute best <laughs> HTTP code is I am a teapot. <laughs> Love that that went into the official spec. Right. Should I know this? It's impressive. <laughs> Um, we're going to run out of time, you know that, don't you? Yep. I have to. I have to stop at midday. Um, right. So this, if this there is should be asked, a, sta a status also. In, yeah. No, status is, as integer is now. I think it's fine. No, it's a string. It's a string. It's a string. Yeah. yeah. It's it's fine. We can do that. Right. So. No, it isn't. Yeah. Put it <laughs> <out>. <laughs> that cracks me up. All right, so what we do is we go current game. Du, 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 du. Current game uh, equals, equals T game the game. on JSON, JSON and a response. response. And yep, then if you it. wouldn't mind, put the else condition in and raise an exception with a response as the message. Um, well, I don't know whether we want to raise an exception. Because um, that all end up with the web page knackered, basically. Yeah, I mean, it, it might be, it might look ugly, but if something goes wrong with this call, how do you handle it? I mean, we got to do something. I mean, we could later change. Well, it no, the... because because we. Um, that's why I said, is there a, like a status that comes back other than that? Because um, when you create the game, what will happen is it wouldn't call the callback. Right. Um, which is what's going to happen here. It's not going to call the callback. Okay. Uh, um, but we do want to call the callback and say, hey, it didn't work. Well, so could you instead put uh, just log to the console right now, what, what that error is? Because for debug purposes, if something goes wrong, you do want to see it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying not do it. I'm just saying there's got to be some way of saying to it, you did not work. You know? Yeah, go spit to another page that says, oops, something went wrong. Sorry, developer too stupid, right? Yeah, uh, that couldn't possibly be the case, but yes. Um, <laughs> so, um, crack game. Oh, dear. Oh, oh my. That, that, by the way, is one of Frank's running jokes, is putting in exception messages that say, oops, developer too stupid. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Um, but, 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 uh, it reminds you to make all the right way so that you never see uh, that your own program <laughs> message you you are too stupid. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it depends on how much pride you put on being intelligent. I'm, I don't have a whole lot of pride. I'm willing to accept that I can make mistakes. Um, you, but, you and I both have children, and therefore we know that there's no such thing as pride in being intelligent. Because yeah. just when you think you're smart, the kid does something, you go... Uh, I, uh, I don't understand their homework. Well, also, just, <laughs> just the very fact of having children means that you understand how to make mistakes. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I just read something on Facebook there. Um, Daddy takes a young child first time to the job, and they're arriving at the office and seeing all the other employees at the office, and the little kid starts crying. And the dad asks, uh, so, child, why are you crying? Because 
you mentioned you're working with all the clowns and I see no clowns here. <laughs> I like it. They'll call you on it. I told you my story last week of, uh, oh, that's an airplane, Daddy. Yes, it's off to land at the airport. That's a motorbike, Daddy. Yeah, you're very observed. You've got a baby in your tummy. Oh, oh thank you. you know, kids will be honest with you. <laughs> okay, we did actually allow for... Um, we had an exception trap. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what we do is we say this. So we say um, I'm, I'm, I'm loving the, um, and I, I knew this would happen, but I'm loving the level of confidence dropping on, are we going to finish this level of confidence dropping? <laughs> oh, no, we're definitely not going to finish this. It's not going to happen. Exactly. Um, I'm definitely going to stream more of this, um, and we can work out how we... Um, what, what, what was my estimate you want to beat? Eight hours? Eight yes. Hours. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. The, the, the confidence is dropping before it was like, no, no, we'll get this done. No problem. Uh, <laughs> I personally, I put it down to all the talking. That's what it's about. <laughs> right. <That's> so, <laughs> so, okay. So what we're doing here then, if, if, if we're able to fill our current, current game objects, right. um, we do that. Mm -hmm. And then um, we can get rid of that now. And uh, great. Then it works. If, yep. uh, if we can't do that, if there's a different error for whatever, then we set success to false. Then we call our callback, and if you remember, our callback is defined in here, and it's got created gain, true or false. Right. I, I actually put it in, so I forgot about that. Yeah, it could have been a function. Um, I just happened to have done it as a procedure. Okay. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have it as a procedure, but hey. No, yeah. procedure is fine. Yeah. There's no need for a function. Yeah. So that's so, the... no, here, here's the trick. In this callback, you have to call the endpoint again. Uh, no, you call a second endpoint, right? Yeah, you call a second endpoint from there inside a local procedure. Oh. Yeah, just, 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 yeah, just go ahead. Let's yeah, so, call me wrong. Uh, Frank is completely wrong. No, he's, he's right. Um, so <laughs> what we need to do if the game is successfully created, and we haven't got to this yet, but if the game is successfully created, we then need to call a second endpoint, the user's endpoint, to create a user on that game. Okay, that's fine. So that's what you do. So you, you'll, you'll carry on and you'll change. Sorry, I'm leaning back from my mic. Um, <laughs> so you'll carry on doing that um, in here. You'll, you'll create that in there. Yeah, okay. and how do you call an endpoint from here? Exactly the same way. The same way as you, as you call this. Um, there you have it. I think what Frank is saying is that, uh, and it, it, Frank may actually be wrong here, but let me explain why. Um, so from within a nested method, level of scope-wise, you don't have access to anything outside the method unless it's a global var. So, which is why we're using model. Which is why we're using model. Um, now, can model make the second call? No. Why, why would it need to? What, what, what you're saying here is we would have a thing in here that said... Something along the lines of what, what was the next steps to do? So the next step is to add call user. add user or create user rather. So you would have a thing in here called create user. Right. Okay. And you would have, you, you don't need to specify the game because you've created the game already. Right. And, and to get into that user, we need to pass in uh, the user's data. So that's a username from the form that you've already you you should have stored somewhere if you go back to the oh um, okay yeah i don't i don't know whether i did that but yeah right so we we would pass over username stored somewhere yeah the game id which you you don't need to because you yeah don't this to. this somewhere this stored somewhere thing is that was my concern <laughs> yeah so you you do need to pass the game id because you can't uh, users don't actually exist as an independent object they only exist as a uh, but, but, but what I'm saying is, this yeah. method here mm -hmm. is going to look at the model for right. the data for the data it needs. Yep. 
because that's all it needs. Yeah, you're, but you're, because you're, you're asking, dealing with global VARs, which is horrible in the first place. But okay. <laughs> well, yeah, the only global it, VARs that are but, it, but we, if we had a controller and it had a proper controller in there, we wouldn't be doing that either. Right. The, neither of the neither this this should never actually be updating the um, the model. You should never touch it because the point about this is that all all of this logic in here, this this stupid logic that we have here, is because of the asynchronous nature of the web core. Right. If we were just doing this with um, uh, Fire Monkey or VCL, this would not happen. We would not have to do it this way. We would be calling it completely right. abstractly. Well, rather than yeah. trying to guess what's going to go wrong, let's just go ahead and code it and see what does go wrong, and then we can fix right. it as we. Yeah. Well, first, first off, let's let's compile this. Uh, by the way, I would always do this asynchronously or in a thread. Right. Yeah, but there's no threads in WebCore. Right, but yeah. it is asynchronous in that the JavaScript is just going to run it in a separate thread, whether you yeah. know about it or not. Yeah. 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 String long O. Oh. Yep, we knew that was coming. Yeah. Uh, and be, uh, you're sure that it's working, that is casted to a string? Fuck me. I'm a doctor. <laughs> The dog. No, you. Uh, yeah. uh, oh no, it's the other way around, isn't it? No, no. No, it's that you've got a couple more properties that are num numeric. User count and oh. game state and game state after to in cast it to the to the enum. So this one. Yeah. So game state needs to be cast to that one's your user count. Yep. Yeah. And your game state needs to be cast to the t game state enum. Back to that in a minute. Um, good a value as any, I suppose. That correct. What's missing now? What? Uh, what's the <laughs> error? Got long int expected string. Where are we? Yeah, the, the intelligent side was wrong, and um, uh, what was Ian? What Ian was right. <laughs> so it's not same text. It's just equal two hundred. This is this is stupid because we we checked it twice that <laughs> status is a string. Yeah, and I'm sure there's probably a list of HTTP codes somewhere in the framework, but we can just use 200. This is horrible. Hmm. Right, so let's put it up on to the site and make it work. Say, um, say the word as soon as it's finished uploading, and I'm I'm on the button. Okay. Yeah, but there's no difference. But okay, it is copied. Okay. I might have just run the script twice, so hopefully I didn't delete it inadvertently. Okay. So. All right. So I'm going to call myself something else. EMB two. Start a game. And we're going to call the game test game. Zero 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 two or whatever you said about. <laughs> um, let's say max users ten just for the sake of it. Language, oh, we'll leave it at GB. Create game, game created. Great. Let's create the user. Right. We fight for the user. I watched that the other day. The the new legacy movie. Oh really? Yeah, it's such a shame yeah. that movie. Um, the story, I guess they didn't have a whole lot to, to work with, but the story wasn't actually all that bad. For me, the real annoyance of that movie, movie was that their efforts to make everything look like it was in a computer almost made the movie monochromatic. 
and it was almost you know you get kind of a headache watching a monochromatic movie all the time um so yeah i i kind of what, was disappointed what? in the production what are the parameters for the game user? Game user. Good question. Uh, let me pull up the object in my IDE here. Uh, data model. Should be on the data model. I can look at the interface. Uh, so user is... Uh, I'm going to copy these properties in for you and you can work with them from there. Um, let me put them in your chat window. Uh, you're going to have to strip a lot of stuff out. Let me do that for you. Sorry, just give me a sec. I'll take all this stuff out. And the point about uh, all this whilst we're doing this, dear watchers or users or viewers or whatever you want to call you, is that um, each step we're going through, we're making sure it works. It, it actually is a workable state. So the initial page on the, the um, app will function correctly, and then this next page will function correctly, and we'll in incrementally build up the... Um, there's actually right. not so much left to do as you as you might think, but I don't. I certainly don't think we'll finish today. But there's, oh, there's we not have, that much to go. We have eight minutes. So uh, eight minutes. Um, oh, time zones. Your your noon is in eight minutes. Yeah. Okay. Correct. All right. No problem. Well, we'll try and get the user data user in, and then we'll go from there. Yeah. Um, what's T player state? So that is another enum, which I will grab for you. Just, uh, you know, we wanted to make things uh, fun for you with enums and things. So I'm well. <laughs> it's coming into your thingy but mob now. Um, and you can. So. Actually, just looking at where we're at right now, uh, in eight minutes, we're not going to get the to JSON from JSON um, and make the actual endpoint request all happen. Uh, that's oh. just not feasible. So um, why don't we uh, do a commit at this point, get the code into the repo? And um, I know it's a little earlier than we normally end, but uh, let's talk our way out and, uh, and discuss what happens next. Sounds good to uh, me. So I mean, I... I will definitely um, stream more on this. I, I, I'm not going to, not now, obviously, but I'm not going to stop streaming until we finish, right. until the web uh, client part of it is finished. So um, let's just make sure it compiles before we commit anything. Has, should we just play a, a little game at the end? Um, I don't think we're going to have time, we but we could play do. Frank's, yeah. Frank's got a working client up, so we can play that client um, and just... Yeah. chat our way through i think your fix frank is to the end of the game isn't it no no okay the trust the trust um, um, the idea was to get it uh, better better visible and we could find the proper endpoint thing there's only um one if missing i think okay i've i've put that code up on the ftp yes. and i've just run the copy web thing as well so that should be live we both ran it um yeah i'm going to commit my code now so, yeah. yeah and i'm going to switch back from sharing your screen and share a browser and we can we can all have a quick game and uh discuss what happens next so Okay, well, I'll stop sharing. So I'm doing a desktop I'll share. I'll pull my Skype my window face off. instead, which is always fun. Um, oh, I just opened a browser inside my VM. I'm not going to be able to drag that around. Let's open a new one. Okay, so HTTPS colon slash slash apocalypsechatmanworld.com. And then did we need anything on the end of it? Was it API? API. So I'll put that in the chat window. Uh, Anybody that wants to join us may. I'm going to also put it in the Skype window uh, for Ian. Yeah. I'm just um, pushing and pulling whilst we're uh, yep. talking. Yep. As soon as you're done with that, go ahead and uh, join us and we'll play our way out. So um, if you are going to continue streaming, Ian, I'm happy, um, you know, negotiating on uh, time zones and what have you. I'm happy to uh, join you on those streams. Um I think I'm going to do a follow-up weekend stream next weekend. I will t TBD because I need to look at what's happening next week. Um, oh. But I think I will do a follow-up stream as kind of a this is where we got to um, finalization to, to finalize the project because I think we okay. can be a little further along. Uh, what should I call this game, guys? Give me a creative name for the game. 
You can hit create. Yeah, but it'll just call it Craig's game. How about um, web core without the E on the end of it? Um, no, I am this is Groot. <laughs> I, I tell you what, I, okay. I, am, about, uh, I am Groot is what I'm going with. I'm going I with I'm Groot. Groot. I love it. All mm. right. So I've created a game. I don't know how many people can actually join, but I'm going to sit and wait for people to join the game and see how visible it is uh, as we play it through. Um, but yeah, I can join you negotiating on times to, to do more streaming if we want to do that. And uh, then next week, I think I'll do like a finalization. And hopefully, maybe we can get uh, as many people who as have taken part in the development process to be online at the same time to actually play it. Because I think that would be a fun way to kind of end the end the series it's joined cool <laughs> yes um and then uh and then we go from there and i, I wanted to mention uh, i'm going to give this 30 seconds longer before starting the game i want to mention what's coming next for me because i have done more uh towards that um i'm going to do a little less live streaming because i have a lot of pre-planned uh pre-recorded videos to do i'm going to be demonstrating my cw runtime uh over the course of about seven videos uh, and then I'm after the runtime I'm going to get onto some more creative projects like I'd like to demonstrate um, how to build a virtual machine how to build a parser um, how to build a pipeline for rendering to OpenGL just some kind of how-to videos uh, I'd like to go down that line and so that's that's what's coming next for me is going to be kind of preloaded videos and I haven't forgotten that I'm, I'm trying to get to the point that I can share some of the AI stuff I've been working on too but I am in the middle of a big refactor on that so Okay, please select the best answer. Google knows I've seen a lion. Google knows I've seen a restaurant. Google knows I've seen Florence Nightingale. Let's go with that. Okay, next round. Uh, it looks like my family are all coming in to join me here, or no, just getting awesome. to the printer. <laughs> okay, uh, please select your answer. The most embarrassing thing you've ever worn is <laughs> Richard Branson painting crayon oil leather, John Lennon. <laughs> leather <laughs> other players have selected queen and pencil so some of the answers are a bit weird, <laughs> weird. yeah and I, I have plans to tidy that up as well and i really I've, I've been trying to involve some creative friends to come up with more questions but it's actually quite a challenge to do uh looking out of my window this morning i saw a fight involving an old lady and the thing is, I'm not actually seeing any questions or answers now. It says, oh, here we go. Oh, I think um, you're the uh, the judge. That happens when you're the judge that you wait for. Okay. Yeah. So, no, so a fight involving an old lady in Charles de Gaulle, John, and then Queen is, oh, it's got to be Queen Elizabeth the second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm from a small town. I've never seen Richard Branson before. Uh, Walt Disney. Maybe with Ocean. And I, you know, I'm I'm in the position here that I'm never going to win because I'm sharing my answers verbally and visually on the screen. But exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I basically I think um, questions involving the words with, involving, seen, uh, you know, heard. Uh, they make sense so long as what we get back as potential answers are people, places, and uh, things, but the things with uh, the correct pluralization. Like uh, one of the questions is, um, I fixed my marriage with, and I thought one of the nice answers for that could be mechanical appliances, right? But it has to be correctly pluralized. Um, so, yeah, and current player, I'm going to get rid of the current player ones because we don't have time to put that in the code at this point. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, I want lunch. Don't know whose answer that was, but that's your point. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, there is something you want to get off your chest. What is it? Pablo Picasso. <laughs> <laughs> So I think there is um, there's a, a, a small bug still in this. Basically, we're not going to come to an actual end with scores, unfortunately. Right. Uh, the I questions so. are just going <laughs> to run out um, because of the, the outstanding okay. bug. Well, I, I'm going to have to head off anyway, so it's probably just as well. <laughs> All right, not to worry. Um, 
Okay. So what I'll do is at some point I will um, message people, I think, and we'll sort out when we're going to, uh, when I'm going to stream and um, finish the web client. And uh, we can all like message each other and sort out whether or not we're going to participate in that or not and um, how we do that. But um, I can certainly record it if people prefer and then um, add that to a stream listing or something like that. Yep. I think it would be good to stream the rest of the coding, though. I think it would be good for people to be able to go, oh, my God, he's did this wrong, and we could have done it this way. And, and um, I like it. So my intention with this was always to, to go till we're finished. Um, unfortunately, it's just so many streams left if we wanted to really finish and polish, uh, and it's, it's significantly interfering with my other projects, basically. Um, but I'm still happy to do uh, shorter streams streams or one stream a weekend or something like that to, to, to see us out because I, I would love to see it working and uh, you know fully fully polished um, but where I stand on the code we had a discussion last week with um, Andrea for the same reason uh, he said can I do coding offline and then share what I've done or record a video or something like that and I, honestly I think we have demonstrated how to write the server how to write the clients in various different forms sufficiently at this point that we've you know we've done our diligence and shown how webcore can be used right we haven't completed yeah, it but we've shown it uh, so i think we've yeah. done enough in that regard that um you know we've kind of got what we intended out of it uh so basically now it's it's relaxed up to you how you want to do it whether you record it or you know whatever you want to do yeah i think i'll probably um I don't know. I have a think about it. I'll probably, probably do a little bit of both, I think, pre-recorded and um, do some streaming and talk about it. Right. Anyway, I've got to go. That is actually my wife asking me where I am. <laughs> All right. You bail. All right. Thank you very later. much, Ian. Right. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Uh, just you and, you and I to see us out, Frank? Yes. All right. Let's switch to our uh, talking head screen and see if we can... Oh, we've got uh, Ian Ian's ghost still on there. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I've kind of given away where I am. Um, the judge has basically our game has ended because we've got we've lost a player and we don't have timeouts. But um, yeah, it's it's functioning after a fashion. Uh, so yeah, basically where I'm at with um, my streams is I want to start getting some of the pre-recorded done, and this time slot is when I would do that pre-recording. So that's why I'm kind of keen to to do fewer streams going forward. But I still want to kind of try and see it out, and we still have a video to do on your MVVM. Uh, framework uh, so what's 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 next for you uh, so I'm currently uh, just refactored the handler for my uh, model connection from the view model to the model so um, we can schedule our uh, recapture of my MVVE MVVM stuff uh, if this uh, is done I will do uh, volume three of my MVVM series, which is called uh, View Model and the Model. Um, and I think if this video is uh, on, on air, we can make a schedule for, for our talk. Mm -hmm. um, before that, it's we could do it, but it's nearly the same with better quality. So let's wait if my linkage from the view model to the model is ready. That's the uh, next part I'm on. I'm just also preparing my uh, Delphi source code for Matter. Uh, try to get it working the basic functionality. And if the basic functionality is also up and running, I will start with little live sessions of doing this. Mm -hmm. um, the next topic on my list is the German code rage. I will do two sessions on the German code rage. And um, it is uh, live in, 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 of course, in German language. And uh, at the same time, I will also put an English version of the same session on my YouTube channel. So if someone is uh, want to have the same stream in English language, it's at the same time online if the, uh, while the German Code Rage uh, session is running. Uh, so that's my, my uh, time schedules for, I think, the next six or so weeks. And after that, I would really like to see and be part of your AI stuff, I think. 
Yeah. So uh, I actually also had, there's another idea brewing in the back of my mind. And um, with all these things, it's if and when, time, blah, blah, blah. Um, but this idea that's brewing is I would like to have uh, an event which uh, demonstrates, uh, it can be Delphi or it can be Lazarus, but I would like to have a Code Rage style event uh, for Chapman World that has um, any Pascal, basically, any, any chosen compiler you wish. Um, bring along your code and show us what you can do with that language. Uh, I would like to have such an event, and I guess this could be kind of, depending on how many people see this video, kind of a call for, um, not call for papers as such, but would you be willing, um, the people watching this, would you be willing to record a video for a Code Rage style event, which would be uh, free to attend, um, open it would just be streamed on my youtube channel uh and uh, basically not restricted to a particular pascal compiler but whatever tool you want to use uh would you be willing to make content for that uh if you would uh then let me know either by just commenting on the youtube or you can email me directly actually um just uh put chapman at chapmanworld.com or something like that and it'll get to me uh and uh, and let me know if you'd be interested so yeah and that's it. That's, that's me. Uh, thank you very, very much for joining me, Frank, today. Uh, I no problem. I don't have the opportunity to Frank Ian, uh, thank Ian because he's, he's bailed already. But uh, I, I appreciated your time over uh, these, what, 14 weeks or so, uh, eight weeks or so. Um, so, yeah, deeply appreciate that. And I appreciate uh, everybody who's joined to watch along the way. We are not done, so we will have uh, another session in some form. But... Um, you know, watch my Twitter, watch my Facebook um, for notifications on uh, when that will happen. So. Yeah, and if you take a look at the uh, public repo, there's also a SYN FMX client. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not completely finished because uh, I didn't find the time to finish it up, but it's some parts are missing, but the the core components uh, also uh, working without the frame stand. Just doing uh, vanilla uh, Delphi FMX stuff, and, and um, it's a little bit different approach. I just I just copied the VCL client stuff into into the FMX stuff and put around uh, T-Task run. <laughs> right. So I, I'll also make this commitment. So if you are, um, you know, if you're following the GitHub project, which I will link in the video description, uh, if you're following the GitHub project, I'll make sure that um, the code continues until we have a fully functioning web core client and a fully functioning FMX client. So one way or another, um, it, whether Andrea has time to finish it or not, we will make sure that both clients actually get completed out. Um, and as I said, watch this space for uh, a follow-up video with uh, completed clients, hopefully. So. Yeah, so you will call it a day or just uh, take a look at our missing part for ending the game for the web client? Um, I think I'm going to call it a day at this point because I actually have a four-hour drive ahead of me, uh, so getting the extra hour would, will be useful. Uh, okay, so I'll, no I'll problem. call it there. Um, I, I was going to go till noon my time, but um, the, actually the extra hour could be useful to me, so I'm going to go ahead and call it. Um, and so, uh, yeah, watch this space. I expect to be back next week, um, but watch this space for notifications because I need to plan uh, whether we're going to do one or two days and, and when that will be. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take Set care. It. Bye bye. Bye bye. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Yeah. So perhaps you're...